presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Welcome to the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl from Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, California. It's number 17 UCLA and the Baylor Bears. UCLA nine win season looking for its first 10 win campaign since 2005. Baylor won its final three games including a win over at the time number one ranked Kansas State. Jim Mora in his first year as head coach has already won nine contests and he's got a terrific offense. Meanwhile, Art Bryle, speaking of offense, the nation's leaders in total offense, fifth in scoring. He's got Baylor bowling for the third straight year. First time that's happened in school history. Alongside Brian Greasy and Jen Brown, I'm Dave Pash. Baylor's won the toss, elected to receive. You don't see that a whole lot anymore, but when you have an offense like Baylor, you want the ball. These kinds of fireworks from the Baylor offense. Both of these teams can score quickly. There's been a lot of anticipation and build up to this football game. I'm excited to see some great offense tonight. Baylor scored 67 points last year in its bowl game. That was with Robert Griffin the third at quarterback. And Nick Florence, the new QB, has had a terrific season, third in the nation in passing. Future kickoff man in the NFL, Jeff Locke, drills it through the end zone. And Baylor will start in the 25. Our impact players include the top receiver in the country in terms of yardage, Terrence Williams. Yeah, Terrence Williams is the go-to receiver. C. Strunk, the running back, has come on in the last five or six games of the season, averaging over seven yards a carry. And this defense has been much maligned, but Eddie Lackey's had a terrific year. He's the leader on that side of the football, but make no mistake, this team from Baylor is all about offense. They are gonna to try to outscore UCLA around and stop it. Antoine Goodley, a wide receiver, just shifted into the backfield, and he'll get it on first down. And a good pickup of five out to the 30, brought down by Jordan Zumwalt. Well, Nick Florence comes into this game needing 173 passing yards for the single-season school record, breaking RG3's mark. And he can also run, too. His uh, rushing number's close to what Griffin did last year. Here's Goodley on the catch, and a Baylor first down. Out to the 41 yard line. You can't say enough about the job that Nick Florence has done. Coming in, replacing RG3, that is so difficult to do, but he has done each and every week, gotten better in this offense, and now he's playing at an unbelievable level for our Bryles. And Florence, as we mentioned, he can run, but uh, so can UCLA. They've got some speedsters at linebacker and on the D line. That's Eric Kendricks, the Pac-12 leader in tackles. Well, Kendricks will make plays all over the field. Nice job of reading. Decides to keep that ball, Florence does, and Kendricks has good speed to get to the outside. This UCLA front seven has enough speed to run if Nick Florence tries to get to the outside. No gain on the play, and then a bad snap. Florence smothered, able to recover it, as Anthony Barr, the nation's leader in sacks, came flying in there. Well, this ball was a little low and to the left, and Florence has got to catch that football. I know it wasn't a great snap, but you got to catch that as a quarterback. Sometimes you try to go one way, and the snap comes the other, and it's very difficult to handle. And Anthony Barr gets a cheap sack now, 14 and a half for him on the season. For a former running back, this is his first year on defense. So third down and 23. Blood clock down to four. It's at one. And a flag, they did not get the playoff. It's a delay. And then another flag comes in on Dayton Jones for the late hit on Florence. But I don't know that he saw or heard the whistle. He certainly didn't see the flag because it came from the back judge. And apparently he didn't hear the whistle because he kept playing. So again, it's a tough one on Dayton Jones. Well, the, the flag comes in from the from the very back umpire on the other side of the field, and Dayton Jones, I understand, you can't you can't sometimes you can't hear that. And he's not looking at, at 
the official behind the quarterback. He's looking at the quarterback. Well, that time you heard the whistle, but uh, that's that's very difficult on a defensive lineman. Remember, he is snorting, trying to get to the, yeah. to the quarterback and getting blocked, and that's very difficult. So they get a first down. It was third down. It was going to be third and 28. Here's Lake Seastrunk, and he's trying to get outside. Can't fight off tackles. Andrew Abbott on the stop. Seastrunk over his last five games, averaging 139 yards per contest. A big reason why they won their final three games. Well, obviously, and it's been well documented. The transfer from Oregon. It took him some time to acclimate, learn this offense. But now that he's gotten the bulk of the carries, you've seen why he was one of the top recruits in the country two years ago. Here's Seastrunk straight ahead and ran in to a teammate. And brought down by some wall as well for UCLA. It'll be third down. And the, and the thing that you really like about Seastrong is his lower body is so strong. He's low to the ground. He's very hard to bring down. He's got great balance. And then on top of all that and the power, he's got tremendous speed. So they, they're very excited about Seastrong. And I think he's got the potential next year hey. to be really good. I don't know about the Heisman like he said. I was going to say he's excited about himself. He, he picked absolutely. himself to win the Heisman next year. Probably didn't need to go that far. Another third down. Here comes pressure and Florence in trouble. They don't blow the whistle. And eventually goes down at the 43 yard line. Got back to the line of scrimmage. As Dayton Jones gets him to the ground. Well, third down, Jim Moore, Lou Spanos bring some pressure. They bring three linebackers from the second level, and Nick Florence does not recognize it, does not diagnose and get rid of the football. When you see those three guys coming inside and know that you can't block them, that ball has got to come out. Spencer Roth will boot it away for Baylor. Shaq Evans, deep man for UCLA, very dangerous player, transfer from Notre Dame. This is returnable. But good coverage downfield by the Bears as Corey Coleman takes down Evan Short of the 20. UCLA's impact players. Well, it starts with this team with Jonathan Franklin, the senior running back. He's broken most every record in UCLA history as a running back. And tonight, he will be featured against the weak Baylor defense. Fourier, the tight end, caught a lot of touchdowns, 11 of them on the season. And then we've already seen the impact that Anthony Barr can have from that defensive end position on defense for UCLA. Richard freshman quarterback, Brett Hundley from Chandler, Arizona. He's an excellent passer, and that one way high intended for Fourier. He's converting almost 70% of his passes. He's thrown 26 touchdowns, second most in school history, and he set the single season school record for total offense. He's got all the intangibles, the measurements. When you talk to Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, and you talk to Jim Moore, the thing that sticks out, though, is his poise, first and foremost. Nothing rattles this kid, and he's been very impressive as a freshman. He'll throw again on play action. Pressure coming, and Hundley down inside the 10. First man there was Terrence Lloyd. This is a Baylor team that doesn't get a lot of sacks. Only 13 on the year coming in. Yeah, absolutely. And Terrence Lloyd off of play action is just going to come from the right side of your screen. And he's trying to, they're trying to block him with a fullback. That's David Allen. And it's very tough on a fullback to block a defensive end. Although they weigh about the same. <laughs> the Baylor's got very small guys on the D-line. Lloyd listed at 235 and Allen at 225. They'll run Franklin on third and 21 just to get some yardage back. And he does a pretty good job. Out to the 20. Brought down by Hager. It'll be a punt for UCLA. Well, we, we talked so much about offenses coming into this game. And both defenses come out and get a stop. I didn't see that in Baylor's bowl game last year. <laughs> I was there for that uh, highest scoring game in bowl history in regular season anyway when Baylor beat Washington 67-56. Levi Norwood waiting for the high punt. And Norwood gets a couple of blocks past the 45-yard line and leveled at the 47. But it'll be good field position after a 17-yard punt return for the Baylor Bears. No score early first quarter here in San Diego. 
string. Didn't look like uh, they'd get to a bowl game, even though they started 3-0. When Big 12 play began, they lost their first four games. Their defense was atrocious, and they finally caught fire. The running game took off. They beat the number one team in the BCS standings, Kansas State. They also knocked off Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. Art Bryles, very well-respected offensive coach around the country. Absolutely. I think the biggest difference in this season for Art Bryles was getting Lake Seastrunk into the offense. Before that, they struggled to run the football with consistency, put a lot of pressure on Nick Florence, and it affected them early in the Big 12 season. Got 874 rushing yards, averaging almost eight yards a carry, Seastrunk, and he's got a big hole here up the gut. And he didn't go down initially, landed on a player and picked up another yard. Looking to finish the run afterwards also. A uh, gain of about five. Dalton Hilliard eventually on the stop. Well, and if UCLA is going to have success stopping this Baylor offense, they have got to contain Seastrunk. And in the middle of the field, that's where he likes to make his hay. You're going to see the ball in the perimeter quite a bit in the passing game, but Seastrunk in between the tackles, it's really what makes Baylor effective on offense. Glasgow Martin in the game at tailback, and he'll get the call. Averaging close to 100 yards per game over his last five is the number two tailback. And he gets 14 yards to the 34. And this is that interior running game just to pull trap. They get the big offensive lineman, Cyril Richardson, up in the second level. And a nice hole for Martin. Florence pulls it back and wide open is Terrence Williams, his 96th catch of the season. First team All American takes it inside the 15. You get two up the gut runs on first down from Baylor, and then all of a sudden UCLA tries to pack it inside, and then you've got the second best wide receiver in all of college football to throw it to on the outside. 20 yard pass play. Back to Martin on the ground. Inside the 10 and near the five yard line for about eight yards. They are running between the tackles against UCLA and having success here in the opening quarter. Second and two. It's Martin. And he's got the first down. It'll be first and goal at the four yard line. Well, and Martin is such a, a valuable option for this offense. As we said earlier in the year, when they were going back and forth between Jared Salubi, the senior, and Glasgow Martin, the junior, at the running back position, he started to gain more and more confidence. And this offensive line loves blocking for a physical back like Glasgow Martin. Yeah, their left guard's an All-American, Cyril Richardson at 340 pounds. They'll run it again up the gut. Touchdown! Glasgow Martin, his 13th rushing touchdown. And Baylor strikes first. UCLA comes out and gets a stop on the first drive for this Baylor offense, but you're not going to stop them for very long. That drive impressive inside power running one throw on the outside to Williams and a touchdown real quick. Any adjustment by Baylor offensively or just at some point they're going to make plays. Take it. Take a look right up the middle. This offensive line Richardson. You talked about him. Here's Richardson here. Here's Caulfield. They're just going to come off and blow the offensive line off the ball and there's plenty of room for Glasgow and Martin good vision there one cut back downhill we talked about this in the open that the offense for Baylor really is the success is predicated on running the ball in the middle and that drive was a perfect example you know last year obviously Robert Griffin the third got the headlines for good reason great player pro bowl quarterback but their run game was terrific last year well, for Baylor. Yeah, you look at Terrence Ganaway. How many visions do we have of Terrence Ganaway cutting it right up the middle and running 50, 60 yards for a touchdown? I mean, he had 1,500 yards a year ago. And now you come in and you've got two backs that have 800 yards in Glasgow, Martin, and Seastrunk. So the production for Art Bryles on offense at the quarterback position, at the running back position, and at the wide receiver position has all been replaced from a year ago. And I don't think anybody in the country could have anticipated that. No. You think about a school like Baylor never had a player like Robert Griffin III to lose him and then at least statistically not miss a beat. The winds are down and what RG3 brought to the program you don't have, but in terms of the numbers, they're still there. Here's Manfro for UCLA on the return. Manfro out across the 40-yard line. He lost the ball. 
Let's see if they roll him down. No whistle yet. They did not rule him down. It's a fumble. Daryl Stoneham, the former Michigan, or Levi Norwood, rather, broke up the force to fumble. Still no signal yet as to who recovered it. And it looked like he was, he looked like he hit the ground. Okay. Well, let's see here. As Levi Norwood came in to chop it out, whether he was down. And it looked like from that angle that he was down before the ball came out, that the ground caused the fumble. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear that that ball was forced out by him hitting the ground. Good return by Manfro. And every play is reviewed, and some are reviewed further. Before the ball was snapped, Replay buzz the previous plays on the further review. So they're going to look just to make sure. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the ruling in the field. And it looked like from what we saw that he was down. And our Conference USA crew will check it out. Wayne Winkler, our referee. Brad Smith, our replay official. Looks like man froze down. It'll be UCLA ball in midfield. Welcome back to San Diego. Baylor leading UCLA 7 0. Stephen Manfro with an excellent return for UCLA out near midfield. He was ruled down before he fumbled the ball, and replay confirmed the ruling on the field. So, first down at the 49 of Baylor. Seven nothing Bears on top midway through the first. All right, Mike, here at 7 0, Baylor leading UCLA. Glasgow Martin with a rushing touchdown for the Bears. And on the subsequent kickoff, Stephen Manfro took it out to midfield, and you just saw first down. A gain of eight yards for Jonathan Franklin on first and 10. That pass deflected at the line and incomplete, so it'll be third and short. And UCLA, when you play an offense like Baylor has, there's so much pressure on your offense and on Brett Hundley and Jonathan Franklin to hold serve in these kinds of instances because you know that Baylor's going to score a lot of points in this football game. Baylor last year scored 67 points in its bowl game. That was with Robert Griffin, the third at quarterback. Here's Jonathan Franklin and Baylor's defense, which struggled mightily this year comes up big on third down against a very good rushing team Jonathan Franklin was 1700 rushing yards entering today gets stuffed there on third down surprised that UCLA is running laterally with Jonathan Franklin they hold the size advantage up front I anticipate them coming off the ball and running right at Baylor the thing that Baylor does well not a lot of things are well on defense but the thing they do well is run so I anticipate UCLA to come down more downhill right at him, especially here, maybe a fourth down play. They're going on fourth and four, or at least maybe trying to draw Baylor offside. Play clock at two. So now you get a delay of game penalty, and now you'll punt. And Jim Moore not happy about that with uh, either not snapping the football and running the play. Not sure why it, yeah, it, it's not, early in the game also. Do you really want to take a chance there and give Baylor the ball potentially in midfield if you don't get it? Well, he, he understands how many points Baylor's going to score. And I think that, that we talked about how it affects the offense. It also affects how you coach the football game. And I think Jim Moore wanted to run a play there. That wasn't just to fake him off. Locke, one of the best punters in the country. And it'll be fair caught at about the 16-yard line. And welcome to the booth here in San Diego with Brian Greasy. I'm Dave Pash. Jen Brown will join us shortly on the field. How about Baylor? Last year, Robert Griffin III wins the Heisman Trophy, number two pick in the draft. Now he's going to the Pro Bowl, yet they still lead the nation in total offense with Nick Florence. Yeah, everybody thought that Baylor was going to fall off the map, right? They were going to get blown out of the Big 12. They lost their first four games in the Big 12, yeah. and everybody's saying, see, I told you so. And what happens? Nick Florence starts to play well, and they get it back in C-Strong. Terrence Williams, we knew he was going to play well, and they have replaced 
each one of those guys at the quarterback position, at the running back position, and at the wide receiver position in Kendall Wright, and they have kept all of that production. It's amazing. And a run C stunk straight ahead. And he spun down at the 20 for about four. The Baylor defense with two three and outs here. As for the UCLA story, Jim Moore in one year turning a team that lost eight games last year into a nine win team. If they win today, it'll be their first 10 win season since 2005. And this is Moore's first college job. He's been an NFL assistant and head coach. And had to adjust and. UCLA bought in. On second and six, Florence will throw. Got crushed, but finds an open Terrence Williams down the sideline. He stepped out of bounds, but still a big play for Baylor. Williams stepped out around the 30-yard line. They'll spot it at the 32. It'll be first down for Baylor. What, what a play by Nick Florence. You want to talk about toughness? Take a look at this hit that he takes. He knows he's got to play downfield. He gets leveled by Zungwalt. And then you on the outside, you play man to man at UCLA against Terrence Williams. He beat him by three yards. That's not even close. And UCLA's fortunate he stepped out. Williams led the nation in receiving yards during the regular season with 1,764. Cease drunk on first down. Those guys to the 26 yard line for six. Brought down by Eric Kendricks, who led the pack 12 and stops. Everybody talked about Kendall Wright and leaving and going to the NFL and the production that he had a year ago. Terrence Williams, they say he's not as fast straight ahead as Kendall Wright. <laughs> that last play, yeah. I mean, that's as fast as you need to be to play in the NFL. They'll take that. Lasco Martin, and that's the first time really UCLA has kept. Baylor to short yardage on the ground gain of a couple. Well, and UCLA has come out early in this game, Dave, and played man-to-man -man coverage against Baylor, which is a very dangerous proposition because of guys like Terrence Williams. That play may have taken them out of man-to-man. Of -man. Now they're playing zone. Third down and two. They'll keep it on the ground, and Martin is slammed down. There is a penalty flag down. Dayton Jones. 17 and a half tackles for a loss with a second team all Pac-12 performer. Offside, defense number 43. The five yard penalty results in the first down. That's Damian Holmes. That's the second penalty that has led directly to a Baylor first down. Well, Baylor is good enough on offense. You don't need to help them, but that's a huge penalty to give them a first down and unnecessary. Dayton Jones makes a great play. But this has been a reoccurring theme for UCLA all year. They're the most penalized team in all of college football. There was a roughing the passer call earlier that negated the third down play, gave him a first down as Florence bounces off tacklers and is close to the first down of the 10. We, we talked about Florence leading the nation in total offense, third in passing, but his rushing numbers this year actually close to what RG3 did last year. Well, it's just you see how tough this kid is, and for him to play each and every game this year and take these hits and take some shots and come back each and every game, I can't tell you how impressive that is at that position. On second and one, Martin able to get the first down. It'll be first and goal. Damian Holmes on the tackle. A lot of people wonder about this spread up tempo offense when it gets inside the 15 10 yard line where you have to be able to run the football. But Baylor has had no trouble in this red zone areas because they're able to run that football in between the tackles. Now they're going with an empty backfield. They'll put Florence under center. So first and goal at the eight yard line. And Florence throwing a fade. Touchdown. Antoine Goodley. What a terrific throw by Florence and Baylor off to a great start in San Diego. This play was made by formation, getting the matchup that Baylor wanted. They wanted Goodley. They wanted him on the linebacker. This is Zomold. Here's Goodley right here. And he's just going to run a fade. And watch how perfect this ball is thrown right over the outside shoulder and in the bread basket for Goodley. But that is a great call by Barry and Art Bryles. Well, we talked earlier as the point after is good about Art Bryles and the type of coach he is sought after in the offseason by other schools, elected to stay at Baylor, and 
doesn't seem to matter who's operating the offense at the quarterback position. They score points. They already got 14 here against UCLA. And welcome back to San Diego on the parade earlier today. Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl, where Baylor's already put up 140 yards and 14 points. UCLA has been a terrific first quarter team, but uh, not so far in this game, just seven yards of offense. And they've allowed Nick Florence to complete all four of his passes for 87 yards and that touchdown just before commercial. Manfro is deep. Return the last kick to midfield. They won't give him a chance here. That did go through the end zone. So a touchback, it'll come out to the 25. Well, Jim Morris, first year as head coach in Westwood, got him off to a 3 0 start. An impressive win against Nebraska, first time since 2009. They started the year 3 0. The highlight of their season, even though, as we mentioned, they beat Nebraska, was beating USC. As UCLA, right now, after back to back losses to Stanford, and including the Pac-12 championship game, you'd have to say right now the best team in Los Angeles. Absolutely, without question. And I think the biggest thing that, that Jim Moore has brought to this equation is toughness. They run Jonathan Franklin and Baylor not fooled there. And Gary Mason Jr. gets him to the ground after a gain of a couple. And I thought it was interesting talking with Jim Moore last night about when he interviewed for this job at UCLA, the athletic director Dan Guerrero asked him what he thought of UCLA. And Jim thought back and forth, what should I say? Should I tell him the truth? And he said, you know what? I think they're soft. And that's what they were. And there's no arguing that from the year ago. Pass wide open is Fourier, able to pull it in for a first down. In fact, the athletic director told Mora, you know, I'm glad you said that. That's why we want you, because Absolutely. you're honest, and we, we see it too. And uh, Mora has injected discipline into this program and paid off with a nine-win season. That's their first first down of the game on offense. Breaking tackles is Jonathan Franklin, but eventually... Amon Dixon gets into the turf at the 41. And and players players want that. They want discipline. Players want a coach that knows what he's doing and knows what he wants. They don't want to have a limitless opportunity to do anything that they want, skip practice, all these kinds of things that were going on. And I think Jim Moore had the right recipe. We pass it on to the flat to true freshman Kenneth Walker. And he stood up at the 44-yard line by Joe Williams and Mike Hicks. So third down coming up for UCLA. Inside three minutes to go in the opening quarter, and Baylor leading 14-0. And you can't have many more punts. You want to win no, the game if no, you're UCLA. Well, give, give credit to Baylor's defense. They have come out in an aggressive fashion. Their defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, told us they're going to be a little more aggressive in blitz and play some man-to-man -man coverage, more, more so than they had all season. It's working so far. Here they come again. No safety in the middle of the field. Humley's going to check. Signal his wide receiver on the weak side. Now can they execute? And Baylor now drops a couple of guys deep, and a penalty flag comes in. There was some movement by UCLA. They're trying to get lined up. Ball scarred. Offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. It's on Jeff Baca, second team all Pac-12 well, guard. When you when you take so long to to change the play at the line of scrimmage, it, it these offensive linemen their stance quite a long time, and then the cadence gets off rhythm, and sometimes audibling at the line of scrimmage can lead to false start penalty. He's in there a tackle right now because of an injury, but he's been the starter at guard this year. Hundley stepping up, nowhere to go. Ripped down by Chris McAllister. That's two sacks for Baylor after 13 in the first 12 games of the year. That was 112th in the country, and they force a punt. Well, this was a coverage sack. Shaq Evans was downfield. They wanted to get the football to him on a deep square in, and he just fell down, and that gave Baylor the opportunity to get to Hunley. Jeff Locke, first team all Pac-12 punter, booms this one. 
with hang time, and it's fair caught by Levi Norwood at the 11 yard line. Let's check in now with the third member of our crew. Here's Jen Brown. Thanks, Dave. Well, over here on the sideline, after that first Baylor touchdown, Jim Mora came over to his defensive bench. He said, we've got to play faster. You guys have to play faster and keep pace with Baylor. Well, after that second Baylor touchdown, he got his entire defense. He had them circle up around him. He spent a good three to five minutes talking to them, imploring them to play faster. And I have to say, uh, the guys walked away pretty fired up. So we'll see if they get that message here. And how long will the next meeting be if they don't get a stop here? <laughs> Well, if they can't keep the ball on offense, it won't be very long because they'll be going back out on the field. Minute and a half to go. Baylor backed up UCLA. Did a great job getting after the quarterback this year. Seventh in the country in sacks, but despite the one they got on the bad snapper, it was an easy sack for Barr. They have had trouble getting to Florence, and part of that is because of the Baylor offense. As Florence will keep and gets wrapped up for a loss on the play. Donovan Carter. Brings him down a one yard setback. Well, the question is can UCLA continue to play man to man coverage on the back end? And I think they were concerned about the interior running game, which they got gassed in the first drive. Then they play man to man on the second drive and they get beat by Terrence Williams on the outside. So, what will they do on this drive? So far, playing a little bit of zone. Are you surprised at Baylor's defense so far and how they've shut down UCLA? More so than the offense for Baylor? Absolutely. Here's Martin. And finally, he's brought down around the 17, Dalton Hilliard leading the charge. So six yards there. Third down coming up for Baylor. It'll be third and four. They'll go with an empty set. No linebacker in the middle of the field here. They, if they want to run the quarterback, they've got it. No linebacker, no safety. This is what you force defenses to do. Baylor's so good at it. You force them to the perimeter, then run inside. Kendrick's creeping over now. And Florence in trouble. They get to him this time. Cassius Marsh. Well, it's seven and a half sacks during the regular season. Forces a punt on the final play of the opening quarter. The thing that impresses me about Marsh is his hands. Watch him use his hands to get by the left tackle, and that's just too easy. But this defensive line for UCLA is physical. They've got great hands, and they get to the quarterback. And that's the end of the first. All Baylor in San Diego. presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Baylor leading 14-0 over UCLA as we welcome you back to Qualcomm Stadium and the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl. The Bears won their final three games of the season. Looked like in uh, late October that they wouldn't even make it back to a bowl game. But they got hot, beat the number one team in the BCS standings in Kansas State. And despite the layoff in between the end of the regular year and the postseason, they look sharp, leading 14 zip. Here's Evans on the return. And UCLA will start at the 45 yard line of Baylor. So far, only 11 plays run by the Bruins. Half of them have been Jonathan Franklin rushes, but he hadn't been able to get going yet. You see the numbers, had a terrific career and was uh, ninth in the country this season in rushing. Well, what I'd like to see is them run Jonathan Franklin downhill. They've run him on the perimeter, and that's allowed Baylor to run to get to him. They have a distinct advantage UCLA does up front with the size of their offensive line versus his defensive line. They have both tailbacks in the game, Jordan James, and Franklin, and they'll give it to Franklin. Wrapped up after a short gain, only a couple yards, and their leading tackler on defense, Bryce Hager, led the Big 12 in stops, made the play. Twenty-four yards on six carries for Franklin so far. They lost Damian Thigpen, an excellent back in the USC game with a torn ACL. Hunley gonna throw deep, got a man. It's pulled in by Jerry Johnson for a first down at the 25 yard line. Now Jerry Johnson is a guy that's been in and out of the lineup, struggle with injuries and consistency. But when he's healthy, he can be a game changer. And he has become a target for Brett Hunley in addition 
to Shaq Evans. Big kid, 6'3, 210. 18 yards on that pass play, 27 catch of the year, missed all of last year due to injury. They're going to hand it off to Devin Fuller as they try a little trickery there, an inside run to a former quarterback now playing wide receiver, and he's brought down by Chris McCallis there for nothing on the play. Well, and Fuller is a guy that, that Jim Mora and Noel Mazzoni really want to get involved in this offense. He had seven catches in the Pac-12 championship game against Stanford. He's a dynamic playmaker. Jim Mora said when he was watching some film of him in high school, he reminded him a lot of Michael Vick, who Jim Mora coached at the Atlanta Falcons, so a special player. Hundley in the pocket, going to fire into the end zone, incomplete. He was trying for Evans. And Mike Hicks, a senior leader on defense for Baylor, was in coverage. It'll be third down and 11. Well, this defensive secondary for Baylor has been much maligned, but Mike Hicks played this perfectly. Shaq Evans one-on-one -on -one with the safety, and Hicks gets there right on time. Very well done by the safety. Third down and 11 for UCLA. 0 for 3 on third down so far. Hunley stumbles, but that play was going nowhere from the get-go as Eric Lackey got there along with Bo Blackshear. And now they're probably out of field goal range. Well, miscommunication on the offensive line. They've had to switch up a little bit. Here's Baca right here. He's going to turn, and Blackshear is going to come free. Nobody even blocks him. It's just too easy. But Baca has been at right tackle. He's been at right guard. They've had some injuries and sickness, and so some miscommunication cost them. So, right. Fourth and 18, and they're going for it. Not, not a punt, huh? Hunley with time. Going to throw underneath. Did, did they think it was third down? That didn't make any sense. Fourier tackled, and Baylor will take over on downs. I get not trying a field goal because you got a true freshman kicker who's one of five from 40 plus. That would have been about a 52 yarder, but why not punt? You got one of the best punters in the country. Hit him deep. I'll throw it in the end zone. That too. <laughs> Welcome back to San Diego, the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl. Baylor and UCLA, and it's all Bears right now. Yeah, and this offensive art browser really boils down. It's pretty simple. It's a numbers game. When you look inside the box, there's five guys in the block box. You got five blockers. You can run the football with C-Strunk. Look at the lanes on the inside. Then when UCLA packs seven inside the box, you can't block seven. You throw the ball on the outside to your All-American wide receiver, Terrence Williams, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. This is the simplicity of Art Bryles' offense. It's not rocket science. It's just making the right play and the right call at the right time and execute it. You think about the quarterbacks he's had and the success they've had. Case Keenum lit it up when he was at Houston. Kevin Cobb at Houston. Robert Griffin III won a Heisman Trophy last year. And Nick Lawrence leading the nation in total offense and has a chance to break a lot of RG3 single season records. And he got a touchdown pass in this game. And he'll keep here and he totally fooled Barr, but a good play by Zumwalt. Otherwise, that's probably a seven or eight yard game. Instead, it's only two for Florence. Well, and I think the thing about Nick Florence is he's doing it in a different way. He doesn't have the athletic ability that Robert the Griffin III had, but he has the ability to make quick decisions, get the ball out of his hand, and make the right reads at the right time and execute the offense. And when you have players like Anaway and Seastrunk and Reese, you don't, you don't need to be a great athlete to execute this offense. And Florence did play, started seven games in 2009 during RG3's freshman season when he got hurt with a knee injury as Florence steps up and takes off. First down and more. Florence all the way to the 45-yard line. <laughs> Look at him run. <laughs> well, as soon as I said that he doesn't have the ability like RG3, he says, well, I'll show you. I'm going to get outside and run a little bit. A quick slide in the pocket and then just a little bit of speed to get to the outside. And those are the kinds of plays that kill defenses. When you cover it, you have it sealed out, and then a quarterback beats you with his feet. 17 yards on that play. And now Florence throwing deep. Oh, broken up at the last second. It was intended for Terrence Williams. And Aaron Hester knocked it down. Aaron Hester got beat for the touch, for the uh, big play by Williams this time. It looked like he got there early. I'm Agreed. sorry, that looks like a penalty to me. Came through with the elbow and hit the head before he hit the football. But no penalty flag. And so it's second down and 10. The Baylor offensive line. Underrated. We talk a lot about the quarterbacks in the run game. 
That time Seastrom grabbed from behind by Barr. You see the speed there. Barr coming from the other side. Again, he was a running back converted to outside linebacker this year. Leads the nation in sacks and is the defensive player of the year yeah. in the conference. Well, the thing that's so amazing about him is he didn't even get to practice in the spring. He pulled a hamstring after two practices, so he didn't even get to play the defensive position. Then they go to camp and he breaks a hand. So it's just truly really amazing his transformation. Florence on third down, gonna go deep, got a man. It's pulled in by Reese. He'll score. Touchdown, Baylor. A 55-yard touchdown pass for Florence. His second TD toss of the game, and Reese now with nine touchdown catches on the season. Well, UCLA has blitzed repeatedly early in this game. Another cross dog internal blitz with man to man coverage on the outside. And you're playing with fire when you do that against this Baylor offense. You've got speed to burn on the outside, and UCLA can't run with it. Third down and nine, and it's a 55 yard pass play. Kevin Reese has 15 career touchdowns, 13 of them for 40 yards or more. That's the definition of a big time player. to a 21 nothing lead and they've done it by finding some matchups that they like they get Tevin Reese matched up on Dalton Hilliard who's a safety in the slot and this is a no brainer that is a track meet and if UCLA does not find the matchups that they like on this side of the football it will continue to be a track meet UCLA has played some fast paced offenses but I don't think they've seen anything like this. You can't simulate it. Right. The thing about it is, is it's so the pace is so fast that it, it prevents the substitutions. And so you have guys that are mismatched and then they're taking advantage of it. Short kickoff. Manfro up to the 24 yard line. RG3 lit up college football last year, won the Heisman Trophy. Nick Florence's numbers are pretty similar. Didn't have as many wins as Robert Griffin the third, but uh, statistically he's right there, and his rushing numbers are close to RG 3s as well. Won't, won't, won't probably be a starter in the NFL like Robert Griffin the third. Not going to be a top five pick. Now let, let's just appreciate what he's done this year. You know the NFL is a whole other story, but let's just appreciate what Nick Florence did following a legend in Robert Griffin the third coming out each week and taking hits and, and being tough and being a leader and then also being the, the, the Big 12 Scholar Athlete of the Year. Yeah. This kid's brilliant. So I, I just really appreciate everything about Nick Florence. Seven yard pass play and then they'll run Jordan James to get the first down out to the 36. Gary Mason Jr. on the stop. Now let's see what Brett Hundley can do here. Redshirt freshman. Has put up some big numbers himself, but uh, he's going to be down an offensive lineman here. Jake Brendel, their starting center, a freshman All-American, shaken up on the play. Well, this would be a big blow for UCLA. They already have an injury on the right tackle position with Simon Goins. They've got you know a, a replacement in Al Alberto Sid, who's been sick all week, and uh, they've had a lot of changes on this offensive line. Started the year with three freshmen. They lose Brendel. This would be a big blow. And Baca has played some at tackle. You wonder if they might move him to center. And he's taken snaps. So he might play his third position of the first half on that offensive line. Jake Brendel starting center. Injures his right leg. You see him get rolled up on by Javante McGee of Baylor. Torian White, the starting left tackle, is next to him. They're looking at his left foot. So you get Jeff Baca at center. Uh, this is an offense that's predicated on running the football with Jonathan Franklin, but even the great Jonathan Franklin is going to have a hard time running the ball with no lineman. Finally, to throw. Ball flutters. His arm was hit. And Baylor again getting pressure 
on the quarterback. Well, and what happens now is Baylor uh, understands that there's no running game, so we're just going to come after the quarterback and rush the passer and pin our ears back, and that's that's what's happening. And, and that time they get to the arm of Brett Hundley, uh, but without a running game, Brett Hundley is not going to be as an effective a quarterback. And you get Suofilo, <laughs> who started at left guard, now playing left tackle. As Hundley completes it to Jordan Payton. Well, so Filo, remember, he's just coming back this year from a two-year stint on a, on a mission. And he played left tackle before his freshman year. He was a starter as a true freshman. Very talented player who they feel like is going to be an outstanding pro prospect. So it's not like it's completely foreign to him playing left tackle, but it has been three years yeah. since he's played the position. You know, Alberto City, you mentioned he's been sick all week. He's in the right guard. Third and seven. Hundley has to step up, and Hundley gets the first down. Lost the ball, but will keep possession. Out of bounds around the 40. Chance Casey poked it free, but it's a first down for UCLA. Huge momentum play. You're down 21 to nothing. There's nothing that pressure's coming after you. Sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to take matters into your own hands, and Brett Hundley does just that. Gives his team a little shot in the arm. Hundley rushed for nine touchdowns this season. School record for total offense for a single season as a freshman. Picked up 19 on that play. Spot of the fumble since it was fumbled forward is where they'll snap it. The 42 yard line. Hundley steps up and almost throws a pick. Chance Casey couldn't hang on, otherwise it's six the other way. Brett Hundley makes a great play with his feet on a previous play. This time he's got to keep the football. You throw the ball late out there, this should be a pick six. The game's potentially over 28 to nothing. He's got to run this football. He's 6'6", 230 pounds. You've got to run the football in that instance. They bring Fuller in motion. Hunley has to step up. And he's going to get sacked. Bryce Hager with the sack. That's three sacks now for a team that had 13 during the or four sacks rather. Hit 13 during the regular season. How much of that is coverage? How much of it is Hunley making mistakes? Well, what's happening now is this this offense for UCLA is out of sorts. They've had all kinds of, of injuries up front. So Brent Hunley doesn't know if he's gonna be protected or not. So all of a sudden now you're not looking downfield going through your reads, you're looking at the rush. Remember, he's just a redshirt freshman. And he's not immune to these kinds of pressures. He's shown great poise through the year, but tonight they're a little out of sort. Hundley gets nailed as he gets rid of the pass, incomplete. They brought a blitz, Sam Hall to safety. And then Fourier shaken up downfield. He was the intended receiver. UCLA is going to punt on fourth and 14. Well, Phil Bennett, defensive coordinator, is going to bring all out pressure. No safety. Good read by Hundley to throw the ball to your 6 7 tight end. He just threw the ball too high. And you can see the accumulation of pressure and hits on Hundley affecting his accuracy. Lock again with a great punt and fair caught inside the 10 at the 8 by Levi Norwood. Capital One Bowl Week continues Friday with three games at 2. Ohio takes on Louisiana Monroe, a team that almost beat Baylor and yep. beat Arkansas this year. That's in the Advocare V100 Independence Bowl. Then you got the Russell Athletic Bowl, Virginia Tech Rutgers, followed by Minnesota Texas Tech and the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas. Well, you, you mentioned Colton Browning for Louisiana Monroe had one of the best years at the quarterback position of anybody he threw for 27 touchdowns. How about Ohio? We saw him beat yeah. Penn State. We thought, hey, it's a team that could win the MAC. They don't even win the MAC, and the team that does is playing in a BCS game in Northern Illinois. I don't think anybody could have predicted what happened with Kent State, Northern Illinois. Those two teams really came out of nowhere. See Strong slips and loses a yard on the play. Well, Diggy Zuwa was in the backfield for UCLA. Well, you hate to say it at this point in the game in the second quarter, eight minutes left, but if UCLA doesn't stop this offense, the game might be over. The way Baylor's defense is playing. Because last year in their bowl game. Oh, that's true. You do remember yeah, that. 67-56, <laughs> but their defense wasn't playing like this. Yeah. 
Well, somebody needs to get Brett Huntley in this offense on the sideline and say, take a deep breath and let's get back to the fundamentals. We're going to keep it on the ground with Seastrunk. He gets grabbed again by Odigi Zuwa. You love it, I say that. Well, back to back plays, you got the diggy in. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's making plays. They need somebody yeah, to stop yeah. the run. Third down and long. Florence, five of six passing. Only thrown six passes, 142 yards, two touchdowns. They, they like to throw it deep on third and long, and they picked up 55 yards on a third and nine and scored a touchdown last time they had the ball. They're going to throw it underneath this time to the tight end. Neither. He lost the ball. UCLA's got it. Picking it up as two true freshmen. Randall go for it. And the Bruins in business in the red zone. Great play by the linebacker number 35. Zumwalt comes up and puts a shoulder and a helmet right on the football. That's the kind of play that UCLA needed defensively in a game like this to change the momentum. Outstanding hit by Zumwalt. Both Zumwalt and Kendricks came in there. And it looked like Zumwalt knocked it out initially, and then Kendricks finished the job. No running room again for Franklin. Baylor getting off blocks and making plays at the point of attack. It's Nick Johnson at Juco. Well, second down and 10. It's going to be a challenge for UCLA to find their rhythm on offense, despite the fact that Baylor struggled so much defensively this year. When you have three new offensive linemen in new positions, it's very difficult to get that cohesiveness and blocking scheme right. Officially a one-yard loss and now a pass ends it up in his forehead. UCLA is on the board. Touchdown. <laughs> Niver turned it over and UCLA takes advantage. It's first points of the night. You get a guy six foot seven running through the middle of the field who's caught 11 touchdowns. You might want to get a guy on him to cover him. The rotation was late from the safety, and that's an easy touchdown for UCLA. 12th receiving touchdown for Fourier, second most in school history for a single season behind J.J. Stokes, who had 18 one year. And the true freshman kicker, Fairbairn, puts it through. UCLA needed a turnover to change momentum, then a dart from Hundley to Fourier for the touchdown. You can play football, you can broadcast, you can cook, you can speak Spanish. Why can you do that? <laughs> you know, that water was cold. I'm still getting the uh, water out of my ears. Hunley is now set. The single season record, breaking Cade McNown's mark. McNown was an excellent college player, former first round pick of the Bears. And Hunley is a freshman, breaks the record. Touchdown for UCLA after the turnover by Nyberg. 21-7 Baylor, 6-20 remaining. And after the great kickoff, it'll come out to the 25 for the Bears. Here's Reese Davis now in the studio. And here it's 21-7, Baylor on top of UCLA with Nick Florence back on the field. And Florence is thrown for 151 yards and two touchdowns. And most of that yardage came on two big plays against man-to-man -man coverage to his receivers on the outside, just running right by this UCLA defense. I do not expect to see a whole lot of man-to-man -man from UCLA the rest of the game. Florence. What a play that is, huh? Looked like he was going to run, then he dumps it off to Reese, and Reese out near the 40-yard line. We haven't seen that yet. Well, it's a triple option. Basically, he can give the ball to Seastrunk, or he can keep it himself, and if they close, he flips it out. It's a very well-designed play that we see in college football quite a bit these days, and it's well executed by Nick Florence. Florence looking downfield, gets hit. 
And no, just thrown that away. He was pressured by Dayton Jones. Just the way Baylor executes and operates, it, it says a lot about their players. But again, Art Bryles and his system, Philip Montgomery, the offensive coordinator. Yeah, Montgomery doesn't get a whole lot of, of uh, uh, recognition for what he does, but he's been with Art Bryles going all the way back to Stevensville High School in West Texas and was with him at Houston. Uh, has been with him now at Baylor uh, for the entire five years and is an outstanding coach in his own right and probably at some point will get out from under the wing of Art Bryles and get on his own. Here's Seastrom finds a hole. Brought down by Sheldon Price, the corner, but a big game. You know, think about it. Baylor started 4 and 8 the first two years that Bryles and company were there and got him to a bowl game in 2010. First time in 16 years. Now it's three straight bowl games. First time in school history. Florence keeps and going to be close. We'll see where they spot it. Eric Kendricks made the stop and he'll be short, so it's fourth down. You well, move the ball, Brian. You, you've got the lead. What do you do? Well, I think in this situation, you just had a momentum change. You know, you give a turnover and a quick score. And I think Art Bryles, knowing him, I think he wants to take back the momentum. And you can only do that by keeping the football. Right. He's going to go for it. They, they gave him the first down. See if they review this further or if more challenges it. Well, it looked like he was short, but they, they gave him the first down. Here's an end around the Reese. And he runs out of play after picking up about four yards. Well, I think you're right. I think they got they were fortunate to get that first down in that situation. Because just from up here, our vantage point looked like he came up a little bit short. So second down and six as Baylor is in UCLA territory again. Florence takes off, finds a running lane. And then that's going to be a penalty flag for targeting. Dalton Hilliard left his feet, went high on the quarterback who was trying to slide, and that's 15 yards. If you target the head. Personal foul, defense, number 19, targeting. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. They see you launch and you go for the head, they're going to throw the flag every time. Oh, and you come back to. The discipline, right, of just knowing Dalton Hilliard knows that you know, when that quarterback starts to go down that way, you can't spear, and that's uh, that's that's not how you want to play football. And it's a, it's a terrible mistake by Dalton Hilliard. Glasgow Martin inside the ten touchdown. Second touchdown today for Martin. Or UCLA cannot afford to make these kinds of mistakes. The second touchdown drive, they had a penalty. Give a first down here, you have another penalty, and all of a sudden your defenders get tired, they're gassed, and then you get Glasgow Martin right up the middle, and it's an easy touchdown for Baylor. 45 penalty yards already. They average about 94, which is the most in the nation, and it's hurt them. They've had penalties that have led directly to first downs. You can do that against some teams and, and get away with it, but not against this offense. Well, as good as UCLA has been this year, that's one area where Jim Mora is going to have to get it fixed going into next year because you give guys like Seastrunk and Martin these kinds of holes, and they're going to make you pay. Welcome back to San Diego. Looked like UCLA had some momentum, but Baylor storms right down the field. Continuing momentum, which started with that win against number one Kansas State. And these three games are showing you they had these huge second quarter leads and were able to hold on to them. 
And they got hot. They beat Kansas State, yeah. beat a good Texas Tech team, Oklahoma State. They're yeah. handling UCLA right now. Well, and I don't think that anybody in the country wants to see Baylor. You know, I mean, no. the, the way that they're playing, they're one of the hottest teams in all of college football because they found the recipe on offense. They found the balance that is so crucial to Art Bryles' offense, running it inside and then the ability to throw it on the outside, especially when they got a guy like Terrence Williams. Although in two of their losses earlier in the season, they scored 50 and 63 and lost. Man throw, and he won't even get to the 15 yard line. Here's Reese in the studio. All right, race first down to UCLA on the 14 yard line. And they're going to run the ball. No. Tackle for a loss. Franklin brought down by Terrence Lloyd. Loss of about three. Brian, they're going to talk at halftime about Matt Barkley's tenure at USC. I want to get your thoughts. It didn't end well. He came back and didn't live up to expectations individually and also as a team. Yeah, and Matt Barkley, obviously, so much pressure coming into the season. Everybody had him as the number one team in the country, and a lot of pressure sometimes can make a quarterback try to do too much. And I think that was kind of what happened to Matt Barkley this year, trying to do so much and trying to win games by himself, and it didn't work out for him. Franklin brought down by Gary Mason. A lot of people are down on Barkley's NFL. Listen, the, the bottom line is that Matt Barkley is going to get his opportunity in the NFL. And if Matt Barkley is good enough to play in the NFL, he will play in the NFL. He will get his chance. And so whether he's drafted in the first round, the first pick, or the last pick, doesn't really matter. He will get his shot. Third down and 13 as UCLA cannot run the ball. And now Hundley going deep and almost pulled in. Lucian got past Casey, but they could not complete the play, and it's fourth down, and we'll have to punt. Uh, the ball was thrown perfectly from Hundley. This is Devin Lucian, who has just come back for this game, and he's got to lay out for that football. Yeah. I understand he hadn't played football since, I think, the Colorado game, which was the second game in the Pac-12 schedule for UCLA. He's been out with an injury, uh, but you'd love to see him dive with two hands to make that play. Pass was, was there kind of short on to trying to get it with one hand nor went under the punt and fair caught around the 44 yard line let's check in with Jen Brown down on the field thanks Dave well some not good news for this UCLA offense center um, Jake Brendel was just carted back to the locker room with that left ankle we saw get rolled up uh, based on his body emotion his emotion and his body language I'd say it doesn't look like he's going to be returning off also offensive tackle Torian White was just taken back to the locker room also with a left ankle injury um, hopefully at the half I'll have a little bit more update but uh, not good news for this uh, offense is trying to get something going no, and, and they've only got 95 yards during that four game losing streak by Baylor. They were giving up over 500, but UCLA has not been able to move the ball. And they, they've had some gaudy numbers on offense. UCLA. But not happening tonight. 3.15 on the clock in the second quarter. And a bad snap. And Florence picks it up and tries to make a play. And throws it away. Heads up play. That's a, that's a that's a great play by by Nick Florence and it's the second time that we've seen a bad snap from Ivory Wade the center that one is not catchable by Nick Florence but the presence of mind not to panic don't just fall on the ball pick it up with your two hands run outside the pocket so that you know you can throw the football away and not get a penalty. Now instead of second down and 25 it's second and 10. Your UCLA can't give up another score. Timeout called by the Bruins. LA, they're first. So we'll be back to San Diego in a moment.
It's all Baylor here in San Diego. A lot of time left, but so far the Bears defense, which has not been very good for most of the season, has shut down UCLA and its star tailback, Jonathan Franklin, just 20 rushing yards on nine attempts. Well, and they've done it in a more aggressive fashion, bringing some pressure, bringing some blitzes. It's also been a factor of the injuries on the offensive line for UCLA and not being able to get Jonathan Franklin going. But you've got to be impressed with the way that Baylor has played defensively. Coming into this game, 119th in the country in defense, and they have shut down UCLA in the first half. And offensively, they, they've done what they do just about every week. They put up points and get big plays. And normally they're outscoring people, but they got a healthy lead here late second quarter. And 308, that, that's like a an entire <laughs> quarter. Well, their average TD drives only two minutes. Florence ducked under a defender. And then they finally get him down around the 47 for a gain of about three. Eric Kendrick's getting a workout today. He's had to run sideline to sideline every other play. So third down and seven. Baylor two of five on third down and they've converted third and long. It's a blitz look here. All these guys up around the line of scrimmage. No safety. And it's pulled in for a first down. Levi Norwood on the catch. So they convert third and long again. And that's just too easy. If you're going to play all out blitz coverage, you got to get up and get in, in the in receiver's face. Otherwise, just going to throw a slant and get a first down. So this UCLA defense is trying all kinds of different looks and pressures and man to man, all out blitz, and total zone. None of it is worked against Baylor's offense. And Nick Florence continues to impress. Got 173 yards passing, and that's pretty big. As we'll show you, Seastrong inside the 20, inside the 10, touchdown! 34 for Baylor. Nick Florence just set a record. And then Seastrong, right after that, takes it 43 yards to the house. Baylor is making a statement tonight. They came here, everybody talking about UCLA and the Pac-12, and is Baylor going to be able to hold up against the size of UCLA? And Baylor is now pouring it on and trying to make a statement in this football game. Last year with RG3, they scored 67 points. This year with Nick Florence, they're on pace for 70. Take a look at the interior blocking here. Let it roll, guys. It's just going to be a trap on the inside. Look at the patience of Seastrunk. Just lets it develop, and then the hole is wide open, and now you see the speed of Seastrunk. A lot of power inside the tackles from him in the lower body, but the thing that makes him so special is the speed on the second level. And Seastrunk, who really has been a big part of this run by Baylor getting an opportunity averaging 139 yards the last five games. He's made the most of it. He's been a difference maker in this offense. Well, everybody knew he had talent. He was most, one of the most highly, highly recruited running backs coming out of high school two years ago. Went to Oregon, didn't work out. Lots been made of that. Comes back in red shirts last year. And then the beginning of this year, Art Browns didn't feel like he was ready to start playing. He owed the job to Salubi, the senior. But eventually, talent is going to win out. And the talent that Seastrunk has, has shown this year, I think, has excited a lot of people in Waco about what the future holds for this team. Uh, he thinks his future is pretty bright as that kick goes out of bounds. Seastrunk this week said that he's going to win the Heisman next year. We didn't even get a chance to show what Nick Florence did uh, because of that uh, touchdown run by Seastrunk, and we'll show you in a moment. But first, let's tell you about a great day of college football on Saturday with five games across ESPN and ESPN2. Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl, New Era Pinstripe Bowl, Craft Fight Hunger Bowl, Valera Alamo Bowl, and we'll close things out in Arizona with the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, TCU and Michigan State. 158. 
And two timeouts to work with for UCLA. Hundley off play action going deep. And the pass nowhere near Shaq Evans. All right, now let's show you the uh, accomplishment by Nick Florence. The, the fact that it's a new single season record, it, it breaks Robert Griffin III's mark that won him the Heisman last year. <laughs> You think that surprised anybody right there? I mean, you can't say enough about the kind of football player that Nick Florence is, and to stand in there and accomplish that, congratulations to him. A fifth sack for Baylor. Chris McAllister gets him to the ground. It'll be third down and long. McAllister has two sacks. They had 13 all year. They got five tonight. And Baylor calls a timeout because they want the ball back. They'll score again. I don't blame him. If I was Art Bryles and if things were going as well as they are right now, uh, I would call a timeout too because uh, anytime I get the football, I think I'm going to score. All right, you just said Baylor made a statement. Nick Florence is gone. So this is the last game that, that Florence will play for Baylor. And in talking with Art Bryles, we, we asked him who's next, and he wasn't sure. But the way things are going, they got to find somebody because they got pieces around them that are coming back. And obviously on defense, they're getting better. <laughs> well, the way that this offense is playing, I might come out of retirement <laughs> if I have another year of eligibility. Yeah. I would love to play in this offense with Seastrunk and with some of the players that they have on the outside coming back. Uh, you just have to manage this offense. And that's what Nick Florence has done so well as a point guard, distributing the football, making quick decisions, throwing the ball accurately, and letting these guys make plays. By the, by the way, congratulations being inducted into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. Oh, I thought you were going to say I'm coming back for another no, year. No, that's why you can't come back. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to spending some time in Pasadena. And uh, it's one of my favorite places on earth. And... Uh, it's a great honor, not for me, but for our team at Michigan. Won the national title there. At Michigan is Hundley in third and 13, throws underneath. Evans went down, took a knee, and so it's fourth down. And UCLA now getting frustrated. A little extracurricular activity. Baylor was going to call another timeout. The officials, I think, stopped the clock. getting a little chippy out there and, and I would uh, I would be upset too as Shaq Evans you know your team is down 35 to 7 this is not the way that you anticipated this ball game going but you're not going to get back in this football game by swatting at somebody or throwing a punch you're going to get back by doing the little things and in, in, in the effort second. it'll be 30 seconds so now Baylor calls its second time out well we're talking about the Rose Bowl and what you accomplished, even with the eye black. You made it popular. Brady decided to do it after you. Look at you uh, get off the ground there. You had to have been jumping on top of somebody. No way you had that vertical. And there's you and Lloyd Carr. You look the same. Lloyd looks the same. Oh, he would appreciate you saying that. I don't know if I look the same, but uh, I'll tell you what, it was a special time. And, and that's what's so great about the college football. And I can't wait to get back to the Rose Bowl. That was the 1998 Rose Bowl when you beat Washington State 21 18. You threw three touchdowns, 251 yards. That's the first Here's half a fake for, for UCLA on fourth down and eight. Jeff Watt gets the first down. Or does he? Boy, it looked like he got it, but the spot not favorable. Chance Casey made the tackle. Great it's rolled the first down, and they had to do that, right? Yeah, they had to, and I'm, I'm surprised that uh, that Baylor wasn't anticipating this, but Jeff Locke is an outstanding punter, and they had the numbers right. You get those numbers right, and you get those guys out on the outside, and if your punter has any speed at all, they'll get that first down. Great play. I think they're going to look at this further. The spot didn't seem to be very good. It looked it looked like he got past the 45 yard line. It's where the ball is when the knee goes down. They're, they're not going to look at it any further. It is a first down. It looked like some of the coaches for UCLA were like get up there and snap it quickly. Now you're UCLA. You got to take advantage of this. You're Brett Hundley. You have got to take advantage of that. Two timeouts just over a minute to work with. And the pass pulled in by Evans who dove at the 48. Clock running. 
throw that ball accurately in the in the face mask of Shaq Evans and he might have been able to run for 10 or 15 more yards. UCLA had some time management issues against Stanford at the Pac-12 title game at the second half. Let's see how they handle this. Oh, great play to break up the pass. Joe Williams. It was a long throw from the far hash mark to Jerry Johnson. Williams knocked it down. Oh, great break by Williams. Nice job not getting a hand on Jerry Johnson and just coming in with a left hand and batting it away. So third and four. In Baylor territory. Still two timeouts remaining. Here's Evans. And Trying to drag a defender with him. Casey on the stop. It's fourth down. Now UCLA doesn't have to run a play. They're going to call a timeout here for their fourth down play. If they don't get it, Baylor's still got 30 seconds left and the ball around midfield. Now, speaking of uh, the Rose Bowl, the uh, 2013 Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio features Wisconsin for the third straight year. See if they can win it. They lost to TCU two years ago, Oregon last year. They get Stanford. Coverage starts 4:30. New Year's Day on ESPN. What a year for David Shaw and Stanford after Andrew Luck leaves, and you still take your team to well, the granddaddy of them all and you go back to that Notre Dame game right in South Bend and and they sh sh could have easily won that football yes. game if they win that game how much of this has changed you know and so uh, David Shaw is one of, in my mind one of the top five coaches in all of college football and uh, it's been very impressive what what he's been able to accomplish and that game is going to be one of those old fashioned Physical knockdown drag out games. Barry Alvarez coaching oh. the game. <laughs> what a great opportunity for, to, to go up there and, and watch that game with Barry Alvarez for just one more game. Fourth down and two for UCLA. Homely throws complete. First down, the clock will stop. Reset the ball. Jerry Johnson on the grab. Bruins still have a timeout. And they'll spike it. So 26 seconds left and it's second down. They were lined up. Do you, do you snap it and run the play? Did you just waste it down there? Well, in this situation, we talked with Jim Mora about this yesterday. He does. He feels like time is more precious than the downs in these situations. And I agree with him because at this point in the game, if I'm UCLA, I want to score a touchdown. And I need opportunities to do that. I need time. So to preserve it. Going for four. Leaping catch inside the 10, or Johnson, excuse me, Jerry Johnson, great catch down at the 12-yard line, 21 seconds left. They'll get up there and spike it. I would spike it again, yeah. And I, I think that's absolutely the right call. In this situation, you are not playing for a field goal. You're down 35-7. to seven. You need to push the ball down the field and get it to your playmakers, and Jerry Johnson makes a great catch and good concentration. Now you've got three shots at the end zone and a timeout. 20 seconds left as well. From the 12, pressure coming up the middle. Hunley throws it away. Ahmad Dixon had pressure on Hunley. Second down with 16 seconds left. Well, Baylor brought it all out blitz on second down. If I'm Noel Mazzoni, offensive coordinator, I'm going to anticipate that again. And who I'm going to try to find is my big tight end right here, Fourier. Look for him to get matched up in the end zone. Coming again. Hunley, end zone, Fourier broken up. All on the coverage. Don't know if he pulled it in, whether he would have been in bounds, and now it's fourth down. Well, they had what they wanted, all out blitz, and they got it up in the air to Fourier, and he has made this catch on a consistent basis. He had one foot down. If he would have caught that football, it would have been a touchdown. All right, fourth down. Do you, do you take the points here? It's 35-7. I'm, to to I'm going for a touchdown. I'm not here to kick field goals at this juncture of the game you need points you need seven Baylor calls a timeout Baylor. again they wasted the down and they got down there they were lined up but you you agree with that instead of trying to run a play you agree with them spiking it even though yes if you didn't it'd be third down here 
Yeah, no, I do because uh, I, I think in this situation, you want to get three really good plays. And you had two good plays there. You had a perfect call to Fourier to go up and get that. And now you have a timeout to talk it over. You're going to have your third shot. And if you don't make it here, then you, you, you don't deserve to get a touchdown. And you'd have to think the way Baylor's defense is playing, that uh, if they don't get it here, they're not going to score 28 points and shut out Baylor in the second half. Well, just after we say all that, it looks like they're going to attempt a field goal. <laughs> well, Shows how much we know, huh? Again, if, if you don't get it, if you get no points, do you really have any chance of winning? I mean, you're going to score at least 28 and hold Baylor to nothing in the second half. At least this way, you get a little momentum going into the locker room. Well, psychologically, you know, I think that's probably where Jim Moore is, is just get something positive going in at halftime. And the fans here don't like it. Fairbairn, 30-yard try. So 35 to 10, Baylor with seven seconds remaining. Now, Baylor's defense has been the story, even though their offense is 35 points. Giving up just 148 yards and out 10 points in this game, but the rush defense yeah. only 26 yards to, yeah. to Jonathan Franklin was 1700 well, coming in. And, and I think you know you got to see the whole picture there. It's not all on Jonathan Franklin. It is about yeah. this offensive line having some significant injuries. Three new guys moved around up front, uh, and it's been it's been tough. And. You know, this UCLA team has been relatively healthy throughout the course of the season, and the injury bug has hit them at specifically that position on the offensive line tonight. I go back to that decision to not go for it on fourth down. The only reason I would go for it in that situation is because you, you know what Baylor is going to do defensively. The last two... Uh, snaps they brought all out pressure and if I knew what a defense was going to do I always felt like I had an advantage and I would go right back to Fourier and throw that pop fly once more and maybe he comes down. The question is would, would Baylor on fourth down and ten would they have done the same thing defensively? Would they have come after him? They did it on second down they did it on third down I, I don't see any reason why they didn't wouldn't do it on fourth down. So Baylor will have the ball on its 25 yard line we'll see if they'll take an E and in the half or try to see if they can get a big play and catch UCLA napping. <laughs> it's you know happened. That, We've seen you know it happen already. Baylor has nine touchdown drives of one play. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> as long as there's time on the clock, I throw it. Well, I think they're going to take a knee the way. Yep. And Florence will end the half. Florence threw for 174 yards and two touchdowns. He breaks Robert Griffin the third's record single season passing yards. He did in the first half. He thought he might do it by the second half, but uh, a terrific first half for him. Seastrunk and Martin combined for three rushing touchdowns and the Baylor defense dominated UCLA holding the Bruins to just 26 yards on the ground. Let's go to Jim. Thanks, Coach. Your defense has come up huge for you guys today. Able to get after the quarterback, contain Franklin. Why have they been so effective? Uh, you know, I think we're just playing with a lot of energy, uh, you know, playing with a little bit of confidence right now, making some plays. You know, we gave up a little one right there for the half, but, you know, we just got to come out and play with the same intensity. You know, we got feel like we got a lot to prove, and we got 30 more minutes to do it. You talk about what to prove. You're up by 25. What is the message to the team here at the half? You know, just keep doing what we're doing. I mean, nothing's over with. We, we feel like, you know, we've got a good opportunity. Now we got to take advantage of it. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Jim. Dave. All right, Jim. Mark Bryles. Team put up 67 points last year in the Alamo Bowl. They're on their way maybe to 70. Reese's halftime report with Reese. You're watching ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. We want some more. We want some more. Welcome back to the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl. Baylor all over UCLA here in San Diego at Qualcomm Stadium. The Bears put up 35 first half points. 
And they're on top by 25 over the Bruins. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Robert Griffin III was a once-in-a-lifetime player. But obviously, this offense is pretty good without RG3. It seems like if you got a veteran that knows the offense, you really can can make things happen. Yeah, and it's been big plays. And, and I think it's been the combination of inside the tackles, running the ball hard. You've had C-Strunk, and now you have Glasgow Martin. You get six guys in the box. You get the good numbers, and you give the ball inside, and he makes one cut downhill and gets to the end zone. Very impressed with the way Baylor ran the ball on the inside. Then you get seven guys in the box. You want to take advantage of man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And what is UCLA going to do? They're going to favor Terrence Williams, obviously. Then you got Tevin Reese, the fastest guy on this Baylor offense, one-on-one -on -one against Dalton Hilliard, and it's no contest. The combination of inside power running and the outside big plays has been lethal for Baylor in the first half. That's tonight's Reese's perfect play. Just 11 attempts by Nick Florence, but 174 yards and two touchdowns. A new single season passing record breaking RG3's mark. Short kickoff. And it's Kendricks for UCLA out to the 31. Let's check in with Jim. Thanks, Dave. Well, I spoke with Jim Moore out of the half. Before I even had a chance to ask a question, the first thing he said is we're running out of linebackers and defensive backs. But joking aside, he said, look, my message to the team was simple. I told him about a playoff game when I was in San Francisco. We were down by 28 at the half. We came back and won the game. He says it's a wild game. Anything can happen. We need to run better. We need to tackle better. But if these guys play together like they know how to, we can come back. Well, Baylor defensively was outstanding in that first half with five sacks and they shut down the run game. They're going to let Hunley run the football and see if they can have some success and he gets close to 10 yards. In that first half, Jonathan Franklin rushing the ball was held to 26 yards and uh, Hunley didn't carry it at all. Trying to get him involved in the run game now. Well, I think if they're going to get back in this game, they've got to take it to this defensive line in a physical nature up front. I know they've got some injuries, but they're bigger. They need to take it to him. Here's Fuller out on the flat. And minimal gain there on first down, brought down by Sam Hall. And, and the other thing is don't underestimate the importance of this first drive. You're down four scores right now, 25 points. You need to get points on this drive if you're going to come back in the second half. Another short throw by Hundley going for Jerry Johnson. And out of bounds right at the first down marker. Chance Casey on the coverage. It is a first down for UCLA. And that's that's a good sign. Brett Hundley was knocked around in the first half. We talked about the five sacks. Come out, get a first down, throw the ball accurately, and get a little bit of momentum. No running room again for Jonathan Franklin. It's Eddie Lackey on the stop. Minimal gain. Franklin had 20 net rushing yards in the first half. So just around two yards per carry. UCLA, even though only 10 points right now. They can score. I mean, they put up 66 on Arizona. They had three other games, make that four of the games where they were over 40. Right, yeah, Arizona State, they beat Washington State. They, they scored 38 on USC, so uh, there's no question that they have the talent. The question is, can they protect up front? Yeah, they've lost two of their offensive linemen to injury. That pass juggled and incomplete, intended for Jordan James, so now they're in third and long again. And they've struggled on third down today, just one of 10. Well, and, and after that second down play, Jonathan Franklin came off the field and looked a little bit gimpy, and uh, he is not out on the field on this third down. Jordan James is in the backfield. And he was, uh, James was the intended receiver on that last play. Here's third and nine. Hundley has a man, but it's incomplete. Shaq Evans couldn't hang on. Joe Williams on the coverage, and UCLA will go for it. Uh, it was a great read. They got man-to-man -man coverage, exactly what they wanted to their best receiver, Shaq Evans. The ball is perfectly thrown, and he just drops it. And these are the kinds of things that you, that you worry about as a coach seeing in, in bowl games and lack of attention to detail. And you've got to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and nine, they bring the blitz, and the pass deflected and incomplete, and Baylor will take over on downs. Sam Hall broke it up, and based on how deep that route was run, even if he completed the pass, he would have been short. Well, it was an all-out blitz, so the ball had to come out, and you can't blame Brett Hundley. It's just a good play defensively. Give credit to Hall 
Give credit to Phil Bennett. Give credit to this entire Baylor defense. They are bringing pressure on a lot of these plays and having success. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear more driven. So UCLA had to go on fourth down, but by not converting, Baylor gets the ball at midfield. Florence in trouble and squashed back at the 44 yard line. Let's hear it. Dayton Jones and oh, Diggy Zula. <laughs> I made you wait a little bit. <laughs> wait for it. Uh, he is a heck of a football player. I mean, he, he's made plays consistently all year. He's made plays in this game, and you know he's a young player. He's got uh, two more years left, so he can he can make a lot more plays for UCLA on the defensive side of the ball. We want to talk about Anthony Barr a couple times. The nation's leaders and, and leader in sacks. He did get one. Where it was pretty easy, it was a bad snap. The ball was rolling around 15 yards in the backfield and made a play in the run game as well. Seastrunk trying to pick a hole. He gets hammered. The safety, Randall Goforth, comes in. Zumwalt, the linebacker, had him low. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage on that play. Third down and long coming up. Florence. Yet to throw here in the quarter as looked like uh, Kendricks was coming and maybe Zumwalt as well. The two linebackers up the middle. And the only rush for Florence steps up and takes off. And down well short of the marker. Kendricks chases him down. It's fourth down. We'll see if Baylor goes for it here, fourth and about six. Or if they well, punted away with a healthy lead. Jim Mora and, and Lou Spanos, the defensive coordinator for UCLA, are very proud guys. Great coaches, been in the NFL for a long time. They were embarrassed in the first half, giving up 35 points. I don't care if it's Baylor or if it's the San Francisco 49ers, they're embarrassed. They're going to come out with a game plan in the second half and, and make some adjustments. And that was a great example of a disguise and blitz and pressure that fooled them. Roth punting, Evans will let it go, and it sails into the end zone. So UCLA will start on the 20. The only time they got a touchdown was when they had the ball in the short field after a Baylor turnover. It's been all Bears here in San Diego. Back in San Diego at the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl. Let's look ahead at the Capital One Bowl on January 1st between Nebraska and Georgia. Bulldogs will be without their star, John Jenkins, due to academic issues. UCLA ran for 344 against Nebraska. The Huskers defense has had some trouble with teams like Ohio State and Wisconsin. You get Georgia with those great freshman tailbacks. Well, if, if Wisconsin can score as many points as they did in that Big Ten championship game, how many points can Georgia score? I mean, Georgia's offense is very explosive. UCLA down 25. First and 10. Hundley with time. Everybody covered. And now Shaq Evans comes open. And makes the catch. Well, we said it on the last drive. We felt like UCLA needed to get some points. You know, Jim Moore gave the, the, the speech at halftime about coming back. If you're going to do that, you've got to get some early points in the second half. Nine yard gain. Franklin back on the field, and that's his best run of the day. Out near the 39 yard line. Stood up by Lackey. But about 10 yards on the ground there for Franklin. And I would speed up the tempo and the pace on offense if I were UCLA. Try to get something going. Hundley throwing to the flat to the freshman Walker. And what a hit. Chance Casey. Corner physical tackle. Gain of about four on the play. Well, if nothing else, Baylor has come into this game and played hard with aggressive nature and ill intent. Everybody's telling them for a month how bad they are on defense, 119th in the country, and they've come out and played with attitude in this game. Hundley, a couple of pump fakes, and got a man. 
Shaq Evans on the catch. Good throw by the quarterback Hunley. And UCLA is inside the Baylor 35. Just a double move on the outside. They've thrown a lot of these short routes to Shaq Evans. You see the pump fake? And then the arm strength on the outside for Brett Hunley to put that ball on the line before the safety can make the play. And they gave him time to throw that too. Remember, you got backups at a couple of positions. You got Baca playing center. He's played guard and tackle already today. Quick throw to Evans who breaks a tackle and gets the first down to the 22. Simon Goins is back in the game despite a knee injury at right tackle, so at least he's out there, but their left tackle and starting center are down for the rest of the game. Two guys need to touch the football, Jonathan Franklin and Shaq Evans on this drive. That's the only two guys I'd give it to. Hundley in trouble and spun down for a sack. It's Mason. Six sack for Baylor. They had 13 during the regular season. Well, the pressure has been the way that they've gotten to Brett Hundley. This time they bring it again, both linebackers and a, a new offensive lineman in Downey, the left guard, lets the defensive lineman go to block the linebacker. That's a cardinal sin for an offensive lineman and an easy sack. Second and 19 after the nine yard loss. Here comes the blitz again right here. These three guys coming out. You got to make the audible as a quarterback. There they come and Hunley finds an open fuller. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but you're in third and long again. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to bring that pressure, you've got to have confidence in your ability to tackle on the outside. Because if they break one tackle, it's a house call. And so far, Baylor has been able to get these guys on the ground. Third and 11. Four out territory for UCLA. Pressure coming and pass toward the end zone. Incomplete overthrown. McAllister had some pressure, and I don't know if Hundley sensed that threw it over Fuller's head. Again, all-out pressure, man-to-man -man across the board, and Hundley makes the right read. That's where you want to go on the corner out. He just throws it a little bit too far. If you're going to miss, err on the side of being short and give your receiver a chance to go back up and catch that ball or get a pass interference. I thought Ford on territory, but with fourth and 11, you try the field goal. 40 yards, try to make it a three-possession game. And the true freshman, Kaimi Fairbairn, puts it through. So it's 35 to 13. 8.18 to play in the third quarter. Got a brand new 3D TV for the family room for Christmas. Did you? This looks great. Kids are wow. probably enjoying it right now. Those have been great pictures all year on our crew, man. Just outstanding. I've had a great season with our group. Uh, this group will uh, head to Tampa for the Outback Bowl on uh, January 1st, like Tariko and John Gruden. We'll be in Pasadena for the Rose Bowl on ESPN Radio. Goodley and Darius Jones are deep. And we'll come out to the 25 for Baylor. Robert Griffin III won the Heisman Trophy last year. He's now a Pro Bowl quarterback for the Washington Redskins who are playing for a division championship against the Cowboys. His replacement, Nick Florence, a senior who actually started seven games in 2009 when RG3 was hurt. He also has a pretty good running back, Lake Seastrunk, averaging over seven yards a carry on the season. And Baylor with 35 first half points. Seventy seven yards for Seastrunk in this game. One hundred seventy four passing yards for Florence and two touchdowns. Only had eleven pass plays. They've run the ball thirty five times in this game. Here's thirty six Florence. I think it's walloped at the thirty yard line by Eric Kendricks. Well, that's a tough way to make a living on the inside right there. Nick Florence keeps that ball and gets Takes a big hit, and you know, it's the last game for Nick Florence in his college career. And uh, to go out in this kind of fashion, I think he's laying it all out on the field, throwing the football, running. He is not sliding. He is playing one heck of the game. Here's Seastrunk trying to get outside. He'll come up just short of the first down. Dalton Hilliard tracks him down. A 
a big third down here for UCLA's defense. After kicking a field goal to make it a three possession game, technically down 22, they're going to run Glasgow Martin. And with the second effort, he gets the first down. Now UCLA's strength on defense is its front. And Baylor's offensive line's blowing them off the ball. Well, I think Glasgow Martin at 220 pounds has something to do with it as well. He's he's a much bigger back than C Strunk, who goes around 200 pounds. But you get him inside the tackles, and he is hard to bring down. He's their short yardage back, and he's gotten stronger as this game has gone on. And just just a junior, I think uh, that one-two combination of C Strunk and Martin, you're going to see a lot of that again next year. There's Martin. And he gets dropped after a gain of about one. You, you mentioned Martin and Seastrunk. What did you make of Seastrunk's comments announcing uh, not only his candidacy for the Heisman Trophy, but pronouncing that he's winning? I think you got to take it in some context. I mean, we, we talked with Art Bryles, head coach, uh, yesterday about it, and he didn't think it was a big deal. I happen to think it is a big deal. Uh, and sometimes you make mistakes. And I think if you ask Lake, uh, tonight about those comments he would say probably I would take those back but you can't take them back and as they may complete a pass on the outside why is it a big deal it's a big deal because it's a team game and Lake Seastrunk has come on like wildfire and there's so much potential for him but he's only played six games and everybody on that team is is watching how he reacts to success and that's not the way you want to send a message to your teammates. This time, Martin's second effort won't get him the first down. That'll be fourth down and one. That it's about him. It's not about everybody. And that's that's the kind of message that can become a cancer. And, and so that's why it's a big deal. It, it is the antithesis of how Robert Griffin III handled it. All RG3 did was praise his teammates, his coach, as Cassius Marsh is shaken up. Here's the quote from Seastrunk this week according to the sporting news i'm going to win the heisman i'm going to win it in 2013 if i don't i'm going to get very close i'm shooting for that goal i will gladly say it, it it's great to shoot for the goal you just, but it's not okay to say it it's just not the time and place and i think that lake seastrunk is going to be a heck of a football player at baylor and potentially at the next level who knows but he's got some learning to do with respect to how he interacts with his team, how he portrays himself, how he portrays the University of Baylor. And, and how do opposing teams look at it? I gotta imagine that's a little motivation for opposing defenses. Yeah, but that doesn't concern me as much as how it's viewed on the inside of that locker room at Baylor. I mean, to me, that's the thing. If I were Art Bryles, I would make sure I got a handle on that. And I guarantee you Art Bryles sat him down and said, look, this is not the way that we communicate. And Bryles actually took responsibility for the quote, said, yeah. you know what, I should have been there with him when he did the interview to keep him from making a comment like that, to put himself in a, a precarious spot. They punt it on fourth and one. Evans will scoop it up and take off. Evans across the 30. Stiff arming at the 35. And finally, the punter, Spencer Roth, with the big hit, but UCLA is at the Baylor 41 after a 43-yard return. Oh, you're right. The punter Roth was the only guy left, and he had a friend. His only friend was the sideline, and so he finally got Shaq Evans out and prevented a touchdown. UCLA down 22, and a big offensive possession coming up when we return. Here in San Diego, UCLA down 22 points. 4.51 left in the third. Big possession here. Hunley on first and 10. Throws it into the ground. There was a receiver in the area. Chris McAllister had pressure. So that's tomorrow with two Eastern on ESPN. Louisiana, Monroe, and Ohio. That was the first screen that we have seen called by UCLA on offense. Typically, uh, Jonathan Franklin gets a lot of those looks, but well defended by... His Baylor defense. Hundley gets rid of the pass as McAllister hit him, and it was low. 
Intended for Jordan Payton, so it's third down and 10. Right. Uh, part of the reason why we're seeing Baylor bring so much pressure, which has been uncharacteristic for them this year, is they see how many changes have happened on the offensive line. And when you have new offensive line, you want to pressure them to see if they can make adjustments. And so far, UCLA has really struggled to pick up these pressures. UCLA overall is one of 12 on third down, and 10 of those 12 third downs have been third and eight or longer. Hundley and broken up by McAllister. So he didn't rush that time. He dropped into coverage and made the play on the pass intended for Peyton. It's fourth down and 10, and UCLA will go for it. Yeah, and, and Baylor is one step ahead. This time they don't blitz, and so they drop McAllister out, and he's right underneath the easy throw from from UCLA and, and I think it's just they, they have the number right now and they're anticipating and again here in fourth down expect pressure now they've converted two out of four fourth downs fourth and ten here comes McAllister again only throwing deep and broken up incomplete Baylor takes over on downs it was a linebacker Dixon in coverage on Devin Fuller on Ahmad Dixon has made so many plays for Baylor this year at the linebacker position. They got the matchup that they wanted fuller on Dixon. Dixon can run, but again, pressure from McAllister forces the throw, and you know, you just can't have a back blocking a defensive end and try to throw a deep route. And again, I give credit to Phil Bennett, defensive coordinator. He has had the number of Norton Mazzoni all night. So three times tonight, UCLA has turned it over on downs. You, you thought after that great punt return the ball at the 41 yard line they could at least move the football and get in the field goal range but they didn't even get a yard Baylor takes over 436 on the clock they have not scored yet in the quarter not saying something given what they did in the first half here's Seastrunk and he gets run out of play after a gain of about two it's Randall Goforth He's replacing Tevin McDonald. Jim Moore had to uh, suspend McDonald because of a violation of team rules. And McDonald, a, a guy that is a key player in the secondary for UCLA, not available tonight. They let go for it, though. He's uh, he's going to be a good player. Seastrunk first down and Moore breaks tackle inside the 30. And then finally brought down inside the 20 yard line by Aaron Hester. Hard to tell if that was a horse collar or not. Seastrunk appears to be okay though. He's got such good patience for a young back and then the explosion. You know, you typically you don't see guys with that kind of power in their lower body that has that kind of acceleration and vision and patience. He's just really a a unique back and a nice blocking scheme in the middle by by Baylor's offensive run. 39 yard run. Baylor moving the ball again. Here's Glasgow Mark. Huge hole. Then says to a defender, get out of my way. Inside the 10 down to the six yard line. First and goal, Baylor. They got some really good backs. Glasgow Martin, 6'1, 220. He's got a couple of touchdowns in this one, 14 on the year. Seastrunk has got 121 yards and a score in this game. Here's Martin inside the five and brought down to the three. Jordan Zumwalt in there. Well, you got to believe with the way that Terrence Ganaway played a year ago, the way that Martin and Seastrunk are playing this year, that there's a lot of eyeballs in the state of Texas that are good running backs in high school mm -hmm. watching this offense saying, hey, this is not just a pass happy offense. I can go play in this kind of an offense in my own state and have tremendous success. And, and I think uh, the, the, the needle is tipping way in the positive direction for Bale. Here's Martin. And he's to the one brought down by Kendricks. And, you know, we asked Art Browse yesterday, why did you stay? He had opportunities to go elsewhere. He said, because they're committed. They're committed to the football program, the money spent, the new stadium that's going up. Yeah. And it's paying off with recruiting. I mean, they're, they're now in the top 25, top 30. And you would have to think it's going to keep getting better. If they have games like this and he says, you know, we're, we're going to have an on campus stadium in 2014 with an indoor facility 300 million dollars invested and that's what we need. There's Martin and it's going to be close. They haven't signaled yet. He's going to be down. It'll be fourth down. 
And we'll see if Baylor just punches it in here on fourth and goal or decides to take the points and get it back to well, a four possession game. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, what, what did our Bryles say going into halftime up 35 to 7? He said, We came here with a lot to prove. This is a great opportunity for us to make a statement. The previous plays on the photo review. Because they're going to review whether he got in, but I wouldn't be surprised if we just decide to go for it if they don't get a touchdown here. Now keep an eye on the ball here. Oh, well, it looks like it crossed the line there. It looked like it yeah, broke the plane. It did. Let's see if his knee's yeah. down or forearm or something. And again, the ruling on the field is no touchdown. So it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. Well, you can't tell whether the knee's down. The ball definitely breaks the plane. Definitely breaks the plane. The question is, is his knee down? And we can't see from that angle. But we know there's no elbow, no forearm, or any of that that was down before the ball crosses the plane. But and is the le is is the lower leg down? Let's see here. Okay, right there, hard to tell, even if his left leg was down before the ball crossed. So without. Video I evidence. Yeah. I don't know if you could overturn it from what we're seeing. I don't think that you can overturn that call and again we, we see this week in and week out when you get these plays down on the goal line with so many bodies around it's a lot. It's hard to see the entire body to see ball across the plane knees down forms. It's just hard to confirm or deny yeah. these kinds of, of plays. You have to be 100% certain to overturn the ruling on the field. But I'm with you on going forward on fourth down. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think there's any question that uh, that Art Bryles came here, not just to have a good time and play in the Holiday Bowl. He came here to make a statement, and uh, the first half certainly he accomplished that. And I don't think that he's going to take his foot off the gas pedal at all. You know, the last two years they played bowl games in Texas, which was great for the uh, fans. But now getting an opportunity to play a bowl game in California might help. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. So again, they didn't have enough video evidence to overturn it, so that's why the announcement that the ruling in the field stands and Baylor is going to go on fourth down and goal from just inside the one. Well, if, if I was Baylor, I've got a left guard and Cyril Richardson is 335 pounds and I got Glasgow Martin at 220. I'd run right behind the left guard. Here's Martin. He's in. Touchdown Baylor. That's three tonight for Glasgow Martin. And then, oh, Palmer just uh, hit a UCLA player, Anthony Barr, with his helmet off in the face. I don't know if the officials saw that. David Carr, or, uh, Anthony Barr had his helmet off. Looked like he may have thrown a punch. And then Kevin Palmer took a swing at Anthony Barr. No penalty flags were thrown. Third touchdown for Glasgow Martin. Now 15 rushing scores on the season. Boy, what an impressive drive that was. Everybody talks about this up pace, high tempo, spread it out, use every inch of grass offense, and that was just smash mouth right at the middle. Point after makes it 42 13 Baylor. Take a look back at our Buick Drive recap. Two big run plays on that drive, and that's really been the story. 47 out of the 59 plays for Baylor have been rushing plays. This is Seastrunk, 39-yard scamper. And then Glasgow Martin here. <laughs> and then Martin from one yard out on fourth down and goal gets his third touchdown. I mean, we, we haven't heard a whole lot about Glasgow Martin this season. And, and I think from what I've seen tonight, he's he's a dynamic player. Catching the ball in the backfield, he can run in between the tackles. This is 
This has been a very impressive offensive performance. We knew that Baylor's offense was going to be dynamic and that they were going to be explosive. I just didn't realize how physical they are on the offensive line and with those two backs. A lot of times in bowl games, you get a sense that, you know, maybe there's one team that isn't real excited about being there because they thought they should be in a better bowl. But with these two teams, given that it's Jim Moore's first year and Baylor's history, they're pretty happy to be in the Holiday Bowl. So you see the score, you see how Baylor's dominated, and big picture, does it make you wonder about the Pac-12 at all? Well, you certainly, UCLA had a lot of success in the Pac-12. They beat some good teams, Arizona State, Arizona, USC. Uh, you know, they lost to California. They lost two games, obviously, at the end of Stanford, who I think was the, the class of, of the Pac-12. But certainly, it raises some eyebrows. Here's Manfro. Gets a huge block. And brought down to the 26-yard line. The Discover Orange Bowl is on ESPN. New Year's night, Jordan Lynch, one of your favorite players I know in yeah. college football in 2012, leads Northern Illinois to Miami to face Florida State. That's uh, New Year's night at 8.30. You can also see it live on the Watch ESPN app and listen to it on ESPN Radio. I, I think Jordan Lynch is one of the toughest players in all of college football. I can't wait to see him go up against that Florida State defense and Bjorn Warner and company. Out of the flat to Fuller, and he's brought down to the 29-yard line. What was your reaction when you heard that Northern Illinois was playing in a BCS game? I don't think they deserve to be there. I mean, that's my honest opinion. Uh, there are, are other teams that, uh, that I think deserve to be there if we want to have the best teams playing in the best bowl games, which I think is the way it should be. But I understand all the, the decisions that go into it, but that's my own personal opinion. Second and seven. And out of the flat to Franklin, trying to get him involved in some way, shape, or form. And he's out to the 33. And, and that's not to take anything away from Northern Illinois. They had a great year, yeah. right? So, Well, one, one of the, the main problems with a system is that only two teams from a conference can, can play in the BCS. Right. Otherwise, you're going to have a third SEC team or a third Big 12 team. Third down and four. And that play was blown up from the beginning. Jordan James, as soon as he got the handoff, was brought down by Hager and Lackey, who were waiting for the handoff in the backfield. It's fourth down. Well, I think Hunley actually saw the blitz and wanted to keep the ball. Let's take a look. He's trying to pull this ball out, and Jordan James takes it from him right there. Yeah. Hun Hunley wanted to keep that ball and yeah. run around the outside, and there was a miscommunication with James. So UCLA has to punt fourth and seven, and the fair catch made by Levi Norwood at the 27-yard line. And you know you got to remember that this is the first year that Brett Hundley is playing in this system. He's a redshirt freshman. He's got a new offense with Noel Mazzoni. You see, he's talking to there. And, and there's a learning period. And, and so he's had some success, but you can't forget that he's a redshirt freshman. But it's his 14th game, and he played great during the regular season. So, I mean, sure. is he really still considered a freshman? Well, and then when you put on top of that, that they have had these injuries up front, and, and when you don't have consistency up front, all the pressure comes on the quarterback because you're going to get blitzed. And if you can't block them, there's not a whole lot you can do at the quarterback position. And they lost two offensive linemen, two of their starters tonight. A third was banged up coming into the game. A fourth has been sick all week. And he hasn't been able to get a running game going either, which hasn't helped. Here's Florence, and he gets chased down by Kendricks at the 30-yard line. Gain of a couple there. And uh, Nick Florence is getting up uh, a little ginger. I mean, you wonder about the competitive nature of Nick Florence. Just look at the back of his jersey. I mean, he is not going to go down without a fight. And uh, he knows this is his last game. And I'm, I've been very impressed with, I knew he was a good player. I just didn't know what a great competitor he is. Very impressed. Go from Qualcomm Stadium. Baylor seeking its second straight bowl victory, won the Alamo Bowl last year, scoring 67 points, had 35 at the half of the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl, and now 42 to 13 is the score. Here's Niber, and he's out near the first down. You see where they spot him. 
going to be short. So third down and one. Niver had a uh, fumble in the first half that led to UCLA's only touchdown. So third down and one. They'll give it to the big Glasgow Martin and good job by Dayton Jones to make a play, forced a fumble after driving a lineman back into the tailback and UCLA recovers. Martin slipped. It looked like he was trying to make a move. He slipped and then he ran right in the back of his offense alignment. And that's what the leg of the offense alignment is what forced that fumble. And you're right, Dayton Jones was pushing that lineman back, but a big turnover for UCLA, but is it too little, too late? Oh, Diggy Zuwa with the recovery. How about that? And Baylor's minus two in turnover ratio and, and leading 42-13. First down for UCLA at the Baylor 35. And Franklin again in the backfield met by two defenders. UCLA cannot block Baylor right now. It's been a struggle, and the combination of the injuries up front and the pressure from Baylor defensively has uh, has been the difference, frankly, in this football game. 30 yards on 12 carries for a guy in Jonathan Franklin who averages 131 rushing yards per game, good for ninth in the nation. In the Pac-12 title game against Stanford, he ran for almost 200. Hundley fumbles the snap, has to fall on the ground. So third down and long. Boy, it's 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 turned into a comedy of errors for UCLA. That time they had a perfect play call against the blitz. All Hundley had to do was catch the ball and flip it out to his back, and they may have had a big play, and you can't take the quarterback center exchange. Very disappointing, I know, for Jim Moore, Noel Mazzoni, and the coaching staff for UCLA to finish the year this way. Overall, they are one of 14 on third down. They've been in third and long all night. Third and 14 here, and the play clock is at four. Comes that blitz again up the middle. Huntley throws complete. Going to be short of the first down, but UCLA will go for it on fourth. Kenneth Walker in traffic made the catch. There's a Baylor player, Josh Wilson, a backup safety. He's shaken up. And it's the first time that they've actually handled this pressure. You see the inside slant is a great way to beat all out pressure. It's an easy throw. You throw it over the blitzing linebackers and you might break a tackle and make a big play. That time they get him on the ground, but it brings up a fourth and short. Now Wilson helped up fourth down and two coming up. And if you're Noel Mazzoni right now, you're telling your young quarterback, look, keep pulling the trigger. You got to grow from this situation. You're going to be in these kinds of games sometimes where you get punched in the mouth and everybody on the team is going to see how you react. Hundley's thrown the ball 43 times. We haven't seen many quarterback runs in this game. Fourth down and two. And they're going to hand it off to Franklin, and he gets the first down. That was a good read right there by Brett Hundley, a young quarterback, diagnosed, no pressure. Instead of throwing the football on the outside, he gives it to Jonathan Franklin, knowing that there's no blitz, and they get a first down. So that's a read that's not designed. Absolutely, absolutely. Ball on the 24. Play action, Hundley. Forced to move right, got a wide open Shaq Evans for the touchdown. Evans got behind Chance Casey, and Hundley put him out, put him out. Keep fighting, keep believing, keep competing. That's what Brett Hundley has to do to be a leader for UCLA going forward. A little slight movement in the pocket, finds an open Shaq Evans, and everybody throughout the entire offseason, no matter how this game ends, in UCLA Nation is going to see and watch how Brett Hundley reacts in this fourth quarter. UCLA going for two, trying to make it 42-21. 12-25 remaining. It's only the third time this year they've gone for two. Hundley. And he was going for Jerry Johnson, well covered by Chance Casey, so no conversion. 
Now both touchdowns for UCLA tonight have come on the short field after Baylor turnovers. Only second touchdown pass of the game. Capital One Bowl Week continues with five games on Saturday on ESPN and ESPN2. The day starts with the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl at 1145 on ESPN and finishes with the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl at 1015. Valero Alamo Bowl features Oregon State and Texas two ranked teams. Baylor played in the Alamo Bowl last year. More on that after the kickoff here by Block. You can imagine an onside attempt. Score 42-19. All right, so an odd spin on it there, but it's recovered by Baylor's Clay Fuller. Well, last year, Chris Spielman was ready to come out of his shorts, and he literally was wearing shorts in the booth. 777 yards of total offense by one team. Uh, FBS bowl record. It was the highest scoring regulation bowl game in history between uh, between Washington and Baylor. When you put those two stats up there, it looks like that Baylor had a terrible night tonight. Uh, <laughs> And again, most of the damage was done at halftime. Oh, they didn't take their, their foot off the acceleration, but they, you haven't seen the big plays. They haven't been as dynamic here in the second half, and they haven't needed to be. I mean, they've run the ball 49 times. They've only thrown 13. RG3 was throwing it all over the park in the Alabama Bowl last year. Here's Seastrunk. Oh, what a great move in the hole that he made. Finally brought down right at the first down marker. Randall go for it. This is what you're talking about with this this kid's low, skill up. Low to the ground. He's got great vision. Watch this cut. Right there. I mean, and, and then the acceleration. It's uh, it's impressive. And he is the newcomer of the year in the Big 12 for a reason on offense. And, uh, you know, I think the future is certainly bright for Lake Seastrom. Transferred from Oregon, redshirted there in 2010. And then sat out at Baylor. After he transferred for a while there, he was uh, in reports at the center of the Willie Lyles investigation, which is a still ongoing. He fumbled the ball there, and UCLA recovers. Eric Kendricks has it for the Bruins. Wow. Uh, check that. It was Zumwalt that had the recovery. Yeah, he was fighting for extra yardage, and that ball was out before the knee was down, and the third fumble of the night for Baylor. Well, you don't see that very often. Plus three, the minus three in the turnover ratio, and you're still winning the game 42 to 19. First and 10 for UCLA on its 30 yard line. Franklin, and a slip, only got about a yard on the play. Well, even though this has not been a good night for UCLA, it has been a good year. And it's a program that might struggle under Rick Neuheisel in four years, 21 and 29. They made it to the Pac-12 title game last year because USC was ineligible. They lost the Kraft fight hunger ball as a Hundley rolls out and throws low and for Franklin. They lost that game, so they finished six and eight. Yeah. Jim Mora, according to reports, was not their first decision, and he ends up getting a job coming from the NFL and leads him to nine wins. And, and some people didn't like the selection of Jim Mora. Some people thought you can't come from an exclusive pro, pro career. 25 years he was with the 49ers and the Falcons and the Seahawks, that it wouldn't translate in recruiting. It wouldn't translate in communicating and, and relating to these kids. And I think the thing that is most impressive this this year is that they found a coach in Jim Moore, and you can feel good about that. That pass was tipped at the line, it appeared, and incomplete. Evans could not come up with it, so fourth down and nine. And UCLA will go for it here. And Hundley's got, he's a Richard freshman. Yeah. He's six, uh, three, 220 pounds. And, He's a drop back cornerback. That's what Morris says. Even though a lot of people call him a dual threat guy, he certainly is that. But he's thrown the ball 46 times tonight. Now they've been behind as that pass on fourth down is deflected. And again, Baylor will take over on downs. That's Sam Hall who got a hand on it. And Palmer went for the interception. It didn't matter. 
fourth time that UCLA has turned the over on down. And another all-out blitz, and Brett Hundley trying to make the play. And you got to understand when you go against that defense that if the if the defender's not going to get there, then they're going to get their hands up. And so you, he'll learn more from this game potentially than any other game he played this year. That's Hall's third pass breakup of the game. Chilly night in downtown San Diego. Mid 40s for the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl. And Baylor leading 42 to 19 takes over on downs at the 31 yard line. They're keeping Nick Florence in the game at quarterback. Going to hand it off to Martin inside the 30. It's been a mostly run plays for Baylor out of their. 64 plays. They've only thrown it 13 times. That looks like a Navy stat, plays, stat line there. 52 rushes, 13 pass. I mean, he just threw that up there. You would not guess Baylor of all teams in the country. No. And at what point, if you're on Bryles, do you say, okay, we, we've got the game won. Let's take a little bit longer look at Bryce Petty. They're back up because they've got to think about next year. They're not sure if Petty's the guy. They've got some recruits and also some other guys on the roster that haven't played including red shirts as Martin is close to the first down going to bring up third about a yard. I understand where you're going with that, that yeah, but I think that's more of a pro mentality. Take a look at a young player. Tonight is about Nick Florence. It's his last game in college. He should be able to play as much as he wants to play in this football game. They owe it to him. And uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he played the, the remainder of the game. They get the first down with Martin on the ground. They'll keep the clock running inside 10 minutes to go with Baylor in command. And you know Nick Florence wants to soak every bit of this up. He had to wait three years behind Robert Griffin III to play. And he wants to get every ounce out of this game. On the UCLA 20, Florence will run it. He's to the 15 for five yards. Well, I mentioned you know, they've got some players on the roster and some recruits. Overall, the recruiting for Baylor is on the rise. And when you win a Heisman Trophy and the guy goes on then to play in the Pro Bowl the next year, it elevates your profile. And then you, and then you build a new stadium, you know, that's going to be done right on the, uh, the highway that comes right through Waco, Texas, where a lot of people drive through. And you don't have to go out and recruit nationally. You just have to take care of your backyard right there in Waco, Texas. You know, they only have eight players on this entire team of over 100 players that are outside the state of Texas. So I think the, uh, the ability for them to recruit is, is going to continue to go. Lawrence just goes to the ground, loss of one. And you look at this recruiting, I mean, this, this is it. I mean, they're already starting to feel the positive effects of Robert Griffin III and of a follow-up season where they came out and showed that it's not all about one guy. It's about a coach that is on the cutting edge of offensive football. It's about a coach that has great relationships with all the high school coaches in Texas that they feel comfortable sending their kids to him and that they're going to be productive. Did you see one of those kids is a quarterback slash defensive tackle? <laughs> What it said. <laughs> Florence will throw on third down and six to the end zone, and the receiver, Lanier Sampson, went out of bounds. There was also some contact with Aaron Hester. And if you're blocked out, you can come back in. And Hester then appeared to interfere with Sampson. He was trying to come back into the field of play. Pass interference. Defense number 21. The foul occurred in the end zone. Automatic first down at the two yard line. Oh, you're right. You get a little push there, and that's, yeah, the ball's in the air. You push them out. You just can't, you can't do that. And um, that's a pretty clear infraction. Yep. So first and goal on the two. They got Glasgow Martin in the backfield looking for rushing touchdown number four. Martin with the stutter step and comes up just short. Second and goal. 
Baylor, for the first time in school history, in a bowl game for the third straight year. You got to go back to 1949 to 1951, where they won at least seven games, three straight seasons. Here's Florence straight ahead. He's in touchdown. 48 points for Baylor with one more coming. And that's the 10th rushing touchdown for Florence on the season. It wasn't like he's just a pocket guy that didn't run the football, but he got in 10 times this year, and that's a great feeling to go out that way, score a touchdown in the fourth quarter, the back of your jersey's all dirty, you're winning the game, and that's a nice way to go out for Nick Florence. Think about this in college football this year. You, you lose the Heisman Trophy winner. His replacement, Nick Florence, leads the nation in total offense. Texas A&M loses a top 10 draft pick at quarterback. They replace him with a guy who wins the Heisman Trophy. And that kind of a year in college football. Three touchdowns for Nick Florence. Two passing, one rushing. 49-19 Baylor. Can Notre Dame complete a perfect season and win the BCS National Championship? Find out January 7th on ESPN. Notre Dame, number one in the BCS standings. Alabama, number two. Have you made your prediction yet publicly? No, I, I have not. Do you want to do that on this very uh, program tonight, or do you want to wait? I'll wait. I'll make you tune in to the uh, Craft Fight Hunger Bowl on Saturday. Okay. okay. Good, good tease. Short kickoff, and again, it's fielded by Kendricks, a linebacker. He's out near the 29-yard line. I am looking forward to seeing Notre Dame's defense, which you know has been the story all year for them, go up against that offense from Alabama, that offensive line. That, that, that game in the trenches is going to be so interesting to watch. A lot of future NFL talent on the offensive line for Alabama, certainly talent on the defensive line for Notre Dame. That will be a battle that I, I really look forward to watching. Well, Notre Dame had, had played an incredibly tough schedule. They had some close calls, including against a bad pit team, but they also had some good wins. On the road at USC, being Stanford as Hundley goes downtown for Jerry Johnson. Johnson dragged down by Casey inside the 20. Nice throw here. Jerry Johnson gets singled up on the outside, and this is just straight speed on a go route, and that ball is right in the breadbasket and a saving tackle from Casey. 55 yards. So first down at the 15 yard line. Hunley throwing it out into the flat. And a big hit as Kenneth Walker gets nailed by Ahmad Dixon. I know I, I said this a little bit earlier, uh, but this is this situation for UCLA and specifically for Brett Hundley is, is so critical. And if I were the head coach, Jim Mora, I would have had the conversation on the sideline with him with respect to building leadership and building respect with your team because what they do right here is going to have a big impact on how the offseason goes. Hundley finds Fourier. He's inside the 10, brought down by Hicks. And when you're trying to change a culture like Jim Mora is at UCLA, from one that was one of entitlement to one of toughness and to play for 60 minutes, uh, you want to look in very close detail at how each one of these guys plays in this situation because it will tell you about their character. Third down and short. And Hundley going end zone. Throw it over the head of the intended receiver, Jordan Payton. Fourth down, UCLA will go. Now, even though this night went poorly for UCLA, there's a lot to be proud of if you're a Bruin fan. Of course, they end up losing their final three games, including the two to Stanford, but you've got to be encouraged by the win over USC, beating Nebraska, uh, showing offensively that uh, you could be physical running the football, and also on defense be physical. And that, you know, again, the moniker for UCLA had, had not been a physical team in the past. 
In the end zone, it's broken up, and another turnover on downs. 480 and 10 of receiver. Mike Hicks at coverage, and it'll be Baylor ball. Well, and, and that's that's what UCLA should have done. Throw the ball up to him. It just didn't make the play. 49-19. And Baylor with the ball when we come back to San Diego. Kingsbury, who you predicted when we had a and against LSU in mid-October, he'd be a head coach after the season. And he's now back where he played. Jared Salubi in the game and running back, and he's out near the 15-yard line. Just during the commercial, Jim Moore, the head coach, and almost only the offensive coordinator talking with their freshman quarterback, Brett Hunt. Yeah, we were just talking about Jim Moore and how much he cares for his players, and they're going to take care of Brett Hundley and say, look, man, this is you're going to learn from this situation. You're going to learn more from this game than you may learn from any other game you played this year, and I'm proud of you. You fought till the end. And there's a lot of football left for Brett Hundley, and they're trying to build a program around him. And I think it was the right thing for Jim Moore to do to go up, put his arm around your quarterback, and say, "Look, you gave it everything you had. Proud of you, and we're gonna we're gonna build on this." Baylor letting the play clock run down. They're gonna hand it off to Salubi again, and he's close to the first down and has it the second ever. I thought it was interesting what he said, Brian, yesterday when he talked about even though he's been in the NFL, he he really enjoys being in college, Jim Moore, yeah. because of the relationship he can have his, with his players. It, it's really an open door in college, closed door with players in the pros. Why is that? Well, you know, the, the pro football is a business, and there's a lot of money going around. Guys are getting paid a lot. Coaches are getting paid a lot. If you don't produce, you're going to get fired, and, and it, it's a business. And in college, what Jim was saying to us yesterday is so much fun. And about 75% of my time is not spent on the field, but with these players talking about their character and their girlfriends and problems they're having. And he loves that part of it. I really think that Jim Mora has found his spot and it's in college football going forward. Salubi gets about eight. I thought what he's the, the most interesting point was when he said it, it's you can't show weakness in the NFL yeah. as a player. If you go talk to your head coach right. and say, you know, I'm struggling with this. Well, now your head coach is going to doubt you. Exactly. Where in college, you, you can do that. And I think he wants his players to come to him. And uh, and that's a great point. In, in the NFL, you show weakness. Or if you show, hey, I'm, deal I'm struggling off the field with this, all of a sudden a coach questions whether he can count on you on Sunday. But in college, you have an open-door policy, and you want to build the character in these kids, and you want to support them like a father. And that's what Jim Moore has done. Yeah, he's got a 17-year-old that's going to be playing soccer in college. His Salubi's wrapped up and thrown down by Anthony Barr. A legal tackle in between the tackles there. And he said, you know, I, I like the opportunity to mentor kids. And clearly he's had an impact because you got a lot of the guys that played under the previous regime who he and his staff got more out of this year. Well, there's a lot of similarities to what Pete, Pete Carroll did at, at USC coming in as a 49 year old coach. He'd been in the NFL uh, for a long time uh, and, and then came in and had a lot of success at USC. And I think it's not uh, too distant to think that Jim Moore can have the same kind of success at UCLA. So Luby gets the first down as we near the three minute mark with Baylor on top 49 19. By the way, Sports Center is on ESPN 2 right now. We'll have it from LA just. A couple of hours up north from here on ESPN following this game. Clipper is going to get their 15th straight win. I know you're fired up about that. As a Nugget fan <laughs> watching go down on Christmas night. Yeah, they, they went down on Christmas. And Florence is done. What a season for Nick Florence. Art Bryles going to the bench here. Florence sets the single season record. For passing yards, breaking Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III's mark from a year ago. Bryce Petty in the game, and he'll hand it off to Salubi again. Well, and and congratulations to Nick Florence for everything he's accomplished on the field, and I just want to say congratulations for everything he's done off the field. I think it's impressive what he's done, being the Big 12 the Student Athlete of the Year, being nominated as a National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete, and at the end of this game, he's the Capital One Player of the game. So uh, you couldn't have gone out any better, Nick Florence. Congratulations. Getting his MBA. He's married. His wife Rachel's. A, a Baylor grad and he ends up leading the nation in total offense 
Started seven games in 09 when RG3 was hurt. As Salubi tries to get outside and stay in bounds. And he did. And the clock continues to run. And the challenge for Art Bryles would be who's the next guy? He, he's always been able to find a guy at quarterback wherever he's been, whether it's been at Baylor or Houston. Or even yeah. when he was on staff at, at Texas Tech when Kingsbury was yeah, a yeah, quarterback. Yeah, Kingsbury, there. absolutely. He's had, a, he's had a run of good ones. And, I, you know, I know this. Uh, he won't have any trouble finding guys lining up to try to play in this offense. Just like you are at the halfback position, uh, there's going to be a lot of guys that want to come and play in Art Bryles' style of offense. Taking the play clock down to one, and Petty wrapped up in the backfield by Dayton Jones. That Gatorade bath is going to be a cold in this win yeah. tonight. <laughs> I don't think he cares. Two bowl wins in a row. Finally getting a chance to play a postseason game in California. Ooh, that was a good I told you you didn't care. Well, the, the official <laughs> <laughs> it too. The head linesman over there got as about as much of it as uh, Coach Browse did. I, I don't think there's a whole lot. We've had, we've had them a lot in the postseason. I don't think there's a whole lot that phases our Browse. No, no. He pretty much has a good handle on his team and on his program, and clearly had a good handle on this game. And he's still coaching. He was smiling after the the Gatorade bath, but something got him <laughs> upset, and they. We got the, uh, the, the head linesman. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Having a good time with it. RG Detillier. Capital One Bowl Week available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the Watch ESPN app. It's a collateral damage, you know, when you stand next to the coach and at the end of games, you got to have your head on a swivel. Hey, RG3 <laughs> got the. Uh, Gatorade shower uh, last year, R.G. Detillier, the head linesman, gets to the Gatorade bath this year. Here it he comes. He's not expecting anything and right down the shirt. R.G. won. <laughs> got the bath this year. That was great concentration there. Man. Somebody else just got the shower on the sideline, and that's it. Baylor goes to 8-5. and five. UCLA finishes nine and five. Sports Center is up next here on ESPN. What a night! What a season for Nick Florence and Art Bryles. Baylor will have to snap the ball one more time. Don't forget Sports Center coming up next. Big NBA news: a coaching change in Brooklyn, and will Phil Jackson be coming back to coaching? Also, the Clippers continue to roll. They hammered the Celtics tonight. Final play, Hunley. And it's caught at the five and going to be close to the goal line. Let's see how they rule it. Touchdown. So with no time left, UCLA gets a touchdown. They're celebrating like they won the ball game. But. Logan Sweet with a touchdown catch. He'll kick the point after, and then this will be done. That's <laughs> uh, more of a choice here. He, he can choose whether to... Yeah, I kick it or not and I think that sweet came up short uh, of the goal line and our Bryles right now is trying to get the attention of the official. He, he wants them to review it further upstairs. And he wants to call timeout time out. to yeah. challenge it. Why not? <laughs> if they're not going to review it automatically, he's saying, let me call timeout right. so I can challenge it. Yeah. Let's see if Sweet got time in. Timeout. Take a look. Bail over there second. It'll be 30 he's, down. Down. He's, yeah, not he's, he's about he's a not yard in. short. And uh, I don't think there's any question he was short. And so Bryles was waiting, hoping that they would review it further. They didn't he call timeout to challenge it with no time left. He's not in. So the game's over. They'll take the, the points off the board.
Well, he challenged the, the ruling, but we haven't had an announcement. Now maybe Brown said, you know what, I'm not going to challenge it then. <laughs> Just forget about it. But he was trying to call timeout anyway. Yeah. Strange ending. More uh, elected there to go ahead and kick it. Final score is 49-26. Browse doesn't like that, but I think when he looks back at the film, he'll be pretty happy with the way he's done. He likes winning four in a row to end the season. I know that. So 49-26 is the final. Baylor wins it for Brian Greasy, Jen Brown, our entire outstanding crew throughout the season. I'm Dave Pash. So long from San Diego. Sports Center from Los Angeles is next on ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, if we can get the Baylor Bears football team over to the over south sideline side for the trophy presentations. presentations. If we can get the Baylor Bears football team over to the press box sideline near, near midfield so we can do the most valuable player and championship trophy presentations. And on hand to help with the player presentation trophies, the president of the 2012 Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl, John Wirtz. All right, first for the most valuable player trophies, the most valuable defensive player of the game. From the From Baylor Bears, Bears defensive, defensive end, number 31, Chris McAllister. Chris, come on up to the stage. Where are you, Chris? Come on over here. You know, I just want to say thanks to all the players and, uh, you know, seniors, this one's for you. So, you know, I went out there, played hard, left on the field, and uh, senior, that one for you. Thanks. Once again, let's hear it for Chris McAllister. And now for the most valuable offensive player of the game. From the from Baylor Bears, Bears running, running back, back, number, number 25, 25, Lake Seastrup. Pictures. I just want to say uh, thanks to seniors for y'all being my big brother. Um, all the glory to God, my old lineman. We, hey, it wasn't just me that won this. We won it. We all won it. Hey, thank y'all so much, y'all. Hey, I'm just, I'm just glad that they be able to see the seniors out right. That was my job, and that's all I wanted to do for them. Give all the God, all the praise and glory to God. Thank you. C strong. And now to present the championship trophy. The president and CEO of Bridgepoint Education, Andrew Clark. It's my pleasure to present the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl trophy to Art Bryles and the Baylor Bears.
I want to hoist that trophy. Let's, let's hoist it up. One, two. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Baylor Nation. Thank you to our football team. Very well played game tonight. A lot of class, a lot of character, a lot of perseverance, what they've had all through the season. Never lost faith, never lost hope. That's how you win. That's how you become a success story. That's what our football team is. To the 700 students that took the bus trip from Waco, Texas to here tonight, we want to say to y'all, thank you so much. Sickle Bears, all of our fans that are here tonight, Baylor Nation is alive and well in California. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 champions of the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl, the Baylor Bears. On behalf of the Bridgepoint Education Holiday Bowl, we thank you very much for your attendance this evening and ask that you please drive or travel home safely. Have a happy new year, everyone.